Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's here. It's a DTM Esports finale. I've brought the pink out. My name's Luke Crane. I'm joined by Connery Malik. Connery, I'm excited, but how are you feeling for this one? I'm, fe I'm feeling incredibly pumped for this one. It's not often that we get to, uh, you know, uh, you know, final races of the season are hard to come by. There's so few of them. So it's always exciting when we get one and uh, to have one with the caliber of drivers that we have here in the DTM Championship is, is all the more exciting. We see the battle between Siggy and Lona once again and see who gets inside that top five as well. Yeah, 100%. I feel a little bit naked today. I accidentally <laughs> uh, trimmed my beard too short. So that's why the beard's gone. So I look like a baby. It's horrendous. Um, look, it's been the stars of the show really have been Moritz Lerner and Kevin Siggy, more so Kevin Siggy. The gap is huge, right, between the two of them. It's very unlikely that Moritz Lerner could go out there and get the victory. But it is super close for that top five. That's what it's all about, right? DTM mm. Esports Champion. But then also, if you get in the top five, you will be heading to the Lausitz Ring. There will be a sighting event, and they will choose the best candidate to win the prize, which is the 2023 seat in the DTM Trophy. But let's have a look at today's format then for you this evening. Lots of action taking place here. We've got free practice, which is currently happening right now. And then the stream starts. Well, if you can hear me, you know that's already happened. Qualifying one then for race number one, which is a sprint race, a 15-minute race. No pit stops, nothing like that uh, then we do indeed have qualifying two uh, which is 10 minutes and then an endurance race which is 60 minutes long with a 30 minute pit window in the middle so that means these drivers do indeed have to come into the pits we are at portimao uh, this week and that's like exactly where dtm is uh, this weekend as well for the first round of their championship so very very exciting but anyway enough of me uh, we are now going to have a look at dtm esports in 60 seconds <laughs> So for the final hour, we are heading to Portimao. Oh, baby. What a track. 4,653 meters. Not kilometers, just meters. Uh, 16 challenging turns, uh, including this little tabletop along the start finish straight. We've got ourselves a Moritz Lerner versus Kevin Siggy finale here. It's a big gap, Kevin Siggy, with the advantage. Can Moritz Lerner go two for two, though? Our current champion. During this season, we've had 29 different sim races from 10 different countries, representing 16 different esports teams. And with all of those teams being as close as they are, you expect to see uh, some penalties and indeed some protests. We have 50 in total, 27 penalties have indeed been issued so far this season. You may be watching on YouTube right now, but they are also going to be watched on 23 different TV stations around the world. Well, there you go. Lots of facts there to indeed divulge and get excited for. Um, Connery, I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes receive tweets from people going, I'm watching from Australia. It's on my national television <laughs> um, channel. And I, I didn't know that. I just figured we're on YouTube and stuff. So it's uh, quite bananas how many people have actually watched this series this season. And they've been spoiled, really, because the uh, level has been incredible. Yeah, it is absolutely crazy how far the reach is sometimes, you know, not just the motorsport, but esports in general. And of course, the combination that we're doing here today uh, as well. So hello, everyone who might be watching on Insert TV channel in your country of choice here. Um, it's fantastic to have you. Of course, uh, you do miss out slightly in terms of the interaction that we have with the chats and the live streams and whatever, but sure, I'm sure you're, you're getting a, a fantastic product as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's great to see everyone getting themselves engaged in this and uh, well, let's hope and uh, expect to see a uh, fantastic championship finale. With DTM, we have five pillars in terms of the way we're moving forward. We have, of course, DTM, we have DTM Trophy, DTM Electric, we have DTM Classic, and of course, what we're watching right now, DTM Esports. And while the boss man, we're going to hear from him now, we've got an interview with Martin Tomjik. <laughs> The DTM Esports season 2022 comes to an end, uh, to a very nice end, because actually I followed every single race so far. It was for me great to see tough and hard and fair racing, obviously, and you, are, you guys, you are the heroes there. And it's, it's nice now to have the best five of you, because the best five of you uh, will join our bootcamp for next year's DTM trophy seat. So, um, fasten your seatbelt, if I can say that, and I'm looking forward for the final race now in Portimao. 
The DTM eSport series is a very important one for us. Obviously, uh, we are still trying to improve, to make it bigger. Uh, now our next step will be to have a new uh, trailer with a lot of sim rigs at the live event, at the racetracks um, all around Europe. So obviously we are trying uh, to keep growing and you guys actually are the main part uh, to support us because whatever you did so far behind uh, the sim steering wheel was great and helps us just uh, to con continue the, the story of success. Well, the best five of you will join the boot camp uh, to get a seat in the DTM Trophy season 2023 and how close the sim racing is to real racing. I guess the best example is Moritz Lerner, who was driving already last year and even jumped on podiums in the DTM Trophy season. He's joining as well this year as a real race driver, but as well as a sim race driver. So I think he's the best example uh, to get you guys an idea how close sim racing is to real racing. Yeah, finally the DTM season 2022 starts and actually here in Portimao and where you have the final race of the eSports Championship. I'm really looking forward for the DTM season. We have 29 cars from 14 nation drivers. We have six brands. It can't be better and actually uh, we already had some tests here in Portimao and it's just awesome to see 29 cars running down the straights. So if you want to join, please check in live on TV or even come down to Portimao. I'm looking forward for you and enjoy the race. What a smoke show of a human being he is. And you can just tell how excited he is for the future of DTM introducing this esports uh, pillar as well, which is always exciting. Uh, well, we're heading to Portimao today again. That's where DTM are this weekend. Uh, we are going to have a little look now at a track guide from Danny Greaser. Hello, welcome here to the DTM Esports Championship Final 2022 in Portimao. My name is Danny Jusa. I'm the DNLS Champion of 2022 with Mercedes AMG HRT. And I think we should go ahead and drive a lap around this beautiful roller coasting track in Portugal. So we're approaching the start finish straight at the last turn, which is really a high speed corner. Lots of understeer when you take too much speed into the corner. And now down the start finish straight, which is roughly 960 meters long. Portimao is roughly 4.7 uh, kilometers with 16 corners, nine right hand sides, and seven left hand side downhill braking to the first turn, fourth gear. Don't take too much speed into the corner, otherwise, you're getting track damage issues. And then down to turn three, hard braking, preparing for the up -hand, uh, uphill left hand side, which is actually flat out, but you can't see the exit curb, which is sometimes very, very tricky, especially in rain. So we're approaching now turn four, which is the first really good passing opportunity here. You can maximize the entry on the right hand side with the curb, but be patient on the throttle. Otherwise, you lose much speed out of the corner where you can go with a crisscross when somebody is well prepared for the corner. Then four is actually really uh, five is really flat. Six is a preparation for seven. So please don't go too hard into one. In this one turn seven is uphill. You can't see actually the exit curb and it feels more like a roller coaster than compared to a racing track but that's the fun of Portimao so we're going up into 8 which is flat in the fourth gear and then 10 and 11 which is really hard on the brake because you can't see actually the uh, apex is really really late so basically you need to nail down so many laps to get here the right flow then 11 12 and oh, 12 is really hard car really understeers when you take too much damage and then uh, speed and then when you go into the last two corners which is not barely perfect here from my side but you need to be very tight on the entry and then we're coming back to the last turn and you're there you need to maximize the run into the corner stay right to the curb and then flat out and the car wants to understeer off the track 
but we made it perfectly on the right, uh, on the left. Uh, and this was actually one beautiful lap at the Portimao racing track. And you will see racing right now here in the DTM Esports Championship final at Portimao. So there we have it. For me, it feels like all the formalities are out of the way now. We're all excited. We're all here for the racing action. Just a couple of bits to go before we get there. Let's check out then the championship standings as it stands. And then we are going to find out exactly how we got to this point. So this is how close it is right now. We've got Kevin Siggy on 380 points then, leading the way by 54 points. So it's going to be tough here. Again, with the DTM Esports uh, allocation here, 40 points for a win. Basically, Moritz needs Ke Kevin Siggy to have a DNA today um, at a minimum and then potentially have a terrible second race. So that's what's really going to be needed there for Moritz Lona to become a two-time DTM Esports champion but it is a finale. Anything is possible. Then we've got Florian Hasser on 234 points, uh, but he's got a 30-point buffer. Uh, actually, a little bit more than that, hasn't he? He's got about a 43-point buffer uh, over... Oh, sorry, not is that even that. It's 37. So 37-point buffer over Leonard Krippner. Krippner is only just behind Otto Viani. Remember, the top five in this uh, championship will indeed advance to the sighting event at the Lausitz ring in a few weeks' time. So right now, Leonard Krippner is the one that is trying to get himself into that top five. Is Keith Lee too far away? I think he probably is, unless he gets a couple of race victories. Is Portimao going to be the circuit for the AMG? Uh, who knows? I guess we'll find out very, very shortly. But we have indeed already had ourselves 10 races to get to this point. And let's have a look then at the road to the final. It is the DTM Esports 2022 race number one. There are 12 in total. And who is going to set their stall here? And Siggy gets them away as they cross the line. And I tell you what, it's a phenomenal start here from Otto Viani. The Dur Esports team are in a little bit of trouble here as Lerner's actually up to P2. And indeed, Siggy he is going to get that overlap once again here. And I think for the first time, he's got his nose just about ahead here. And I tell you what, this might be a move. It might be configured. It could be beautiful. Siggy, though, still on that inside line. The BMW with that pace advantage as we come down in towards this very fast chicane before we head down into the hairpin. And it's done. He is our champion for the DTM Esports currently. And while well, race one of 2022's version is going to go to that number one car for Dura Esports, it's Moritz Lerner. Through a Piratella, there, the left hander, the very fast left hander in the middle of the lap. Look at how close Lerner, Lerner's overcommitted. That loses him a bit of time. And his last opportunity to get a move done on into turn number one is coming up. Kevin Siggy went into the pit early. What a strategy call it was. The Team Redline driver is going to take victory here in race two of the DTM Esports 2022. Sit off that final hairpin. We've got a great look here at Kevin Siggy. Siggy's surely going to dive. He does. He makes it side by side here. And is he going to run out too far off the apex? Well, there's contact then between Otto Viani and Fiducci. Siggy does get up to P2. He was not involved in that incident whatsoever. He set up perfectly well. But the day belongs to Hookfell. The Swede takes the victory here for RAG. There's another attempt from Lona. Not got the overlap this time, but he goes for the surprise move. Down the inside at turn number one. Has he overcommitted to the exit of the corner, though? Someone who doesn't care about that is Kevin Siggy. The team red line driver crosses the line, takes his second win of the season, and undoubtedly will be the leader of the championship. So Lona's going to have another little look here around the outside this time in towards the chicane. The two oh, teams are fighting. Oh, it's brilliant. He's got him around the outside there. That's oh. an unbelievable move in the championship. He's going to finish in P3, but it's all about Moritz Lerner then, the DTM trophy driver, the current DTM Esports champion. Back to winning ways here at the Lousy Ring for race one. So, so strong, especially on the fresher tyres that Siggy has compared to Crip. The look at him. He's all over the back Ooh. of him, and he's got a monster oh. of a run coming out of the final corner. The outside line is the favoured line. Oh, of no. He's actually... Oh, that's... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, bad day for Hookvelt. A really good day, though, for Moritz Lerner. He is our DTM Esports current champion. He's the reigning champion. And he had a bad week last time out at the Norris ring. But today is a double win for Moritz Lerner. And Siggy then forces him to make the decision round the outside. Can he give us a moment to behold once again? Moritz Lerner has got the overlap here. Oh, he has got the overlap. Curb being used. All of the curb being used. Siggy on the power a little bit earlier. It is going to be Kevin Siggy that will take race one here today at Spa. It's 
fantastic performance from him. Had to make a couple of overtakes to do so. We've got a battle for the lead. Lona then still got that nose up in front. They're door banging their way in towards the chicane here. And you can see using all of the curve on the exit is indeed Kevin Siggy. Moritz Lona though is still holding on that inside line. Round eight is going to go the way of Kevin Siggy. Absolutely deserves it there. If he then heads in towards this double left-hander, he's got to go round the outside once again here if he wants B2. What a recovery this would be. He's going to run out and trip on the outside there. Gets ushered them so slightly wide. Left the perfect amount of room. Look at Florian Hasse. He's making it difficult here. Mistake then from Kevin Siggy. Gets too close. Runs off circuit through the S's. So the top five are as they are. Lerner, Siggy, Hasse, Kripner. And Fiducci continuing to get the lead laps logged as Siggy sticks it down the inside. Another attempt from the team Redline Ferrari. We will stay on board with this for the entirety of this final lap. There's a nice little battle though between... Oh no. Uh, oh, no, there's a mistake here. Lona. Lona's going to be gifted a P2. And the Team Red Light Driver will win the race 10 of the DTM Esport 2022. And surprisingly, Moritz Lona does finish in second. Viducci is going to be absolutely gutted. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentle cars. It's, uh, it's been an interesting season for sure. There's been lots of high points and uh, a couple of low points. I think it's going to come down to the Norris ring being a, a bit of a bogey track for Moritz himself, uh, for the reason why he's not really challenging Kevin Siggy, but we cannot take it away from Kevin Siggy. He has been incredible from start to finish this season. Even when he's not had the best of races, he's just scratched and clawed and managed to get onto the podium there. Uh, we've only had three different winners this season as well. We've had, indeed, Kevin Siggy, Moritz Lona and Christopher Hugvelt as our three different winners. Are you expecting to see anyone outside of those three get a win today? Connery, is there the potential for that? Um, th there always is. I mean, Fiducci has been pretty strong throughout the, the entirety of this season, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's fighting up there once again in the Ferrari, especially if this track tends, tends to go the way of the Ferrari. We'll just have to wait and see once we get into qualifying exactly how the balance of performance between all these different manufacturers is going to stack up. But it has ebbed and flowed a little bit over the course of this season. Let's see if it's uh, if there's anything interesting here uh, for this finale event at Portimao as drivers are just about getting themselves into qualifying and well there they are Luke it's time it is time. I am so pumped for this. I love my esports. I love my motorsport. A finale. I brought the pink out, especially for the finale, as I always do. So this should prove to be very, very exciting indeed. There are going to be some team games, of course, played in terms of qualifying. Kevin Siggy's got that massive point buffer, which is the big factor. Well, really, it's down to you guys watching on Twitch right now and YouTube. If you're watching, you can hear me. I want you to let me know where you're watching from around the world and who you're supporting today. Maybe you. this is the first time you've ever come across esports. Just tell me who you're favorite driver is in the world of motorsport or just say hello it's as simple as that i will give you a shout out during this qualifying session uh, as you can see here connery they're just still trying to get some track space as early as they possibly can uh, it looks like the dur esports drive team have got themselves all four in formation as they usually do uh, relatively early around this circuit and there are some proper slip streaming areas uh, most notably at the final corner and down in towards turn number one yeah, that's going to benefit the uh, the Dear Esports contingents the most out of this one. But as we've seen in qualifying sessions gone by, it doesn't necessarily give you that golden ticket to get up into pole position. Siggy, while he's been running on his own, has been doing relatively well. Uh, and of course, you know, there are a couple of other teams down the order that may, may only have uh, two uh, members uh, taking part in this qualifying session that also have been able to do sometimes pretty well in qualifying. So it's not a guarantee that we'll see a Dear Esports pole position here. There is uh, Christopher Hoogveldt uh, heading his way through on his own at the moment as well. So again, he's going to have a bit more of a struggle here in qualifying, but it, like I said, it's not a huge, huge detriment. Uh, but uh, yeah, drivers coming on to their first uh, flying laps now, Luke, and well, we'll get to see how the field stacks up with uh, against each other. Yeah, it's almost like everyone's intimidated by the Dur Esports contingent. Like, if I was one of these drivers that really didn't have anything to lose, I would absolutely be... They're all going really slow towards that final corner. I'll just put myself in the middle of them. I don't care. Like, I, I want to upset the apple cart here and kind of make this as fair as possible for everybody. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like the AMG that normally goes out ahead of everybody uh, has just pulled away into Turn 1, giving them the slipstream down in towards Turn number 1. So expect to see one of these cars indeed be at the front there as well. Uh, shout out then to DJ 
Superior, who's in the chat. We've got Bandit in the chat. Master Barmy, Laser Crab, Carrots, DM, uh, TDM, uh, Oatmeal as well, you legend. Uh, who else we got on YouTube? Then we've got Dark Lord, who's watching from India. Uh, we've got Ivan Milioff, who's watching from Bulgaria. Lonnie's uh, from Germany, cheering on Lona. Uh, we've got indeed Eric Pardona from Mexico and Harko from the Netherlands. Again, keep your hellos coming in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give you a shout out and let's get a bit hype for this, shall we? Let's get a bit excited. This is the DTM Esports. This is the finale. Top five, remember, if we can just have a quick look at the point standings as it stands, as Morris Lona, by the way, has gone. Uh, fastest in second one and second two is first lap. I expect that to be the case for pretty much everybody. Uh, but it's Kevin Siggy that leads the way. He's comfortably in the lead here. He is more than a race victory ahead of Moritz Lona. But look at P5 and P6. Remember, we will have a DTM Esports champion today. Okay, it's more than likely going to be Kevin Siggy, but the prize is for the top five. So the top five will get an all expenses paid trip to the Lausitz ring, which is in a few weeks time in the middle of May uh, for the DTM. And they will have a sighting event across the weekend. And then the best candidate will be chosen by the DTM crew and they will win themselves a fully paid DTM trophy 2023 drive all season so pretty incredible there as Leonard Krippner is the fastest he's got his teammates to help him but Siggy who's got nobody to help him is merely two hundredths of a second back Siggy is absolutely here to fight for everything he doesn't care if he's already nearly 60 points in the lead or over 60 points in the lead he is currently second on the grid he's happy with that Fiducci another really good performance but it is again BMW versus the Ferrari Yep, that does seem to be the case. You know, it, it has been the, the story that we've been talking about since basically the very, very start of the season. It was very evident uh, that the, the balance performance was going to swing uh, around favoring the Ferraris and the BMWs over the course of this uh, entire season. And, uh, well, it's just, uh, well, we've got a good mix up there at the moment. We've got a BMW pole position. However, we do have two Ferraris behind in second and third. And then we have that dirty sports contingent of three BMWs down to Mark Gastner in sixth. And then we have two Mercedes, actually, uh, Piska and Pfeiffer, uh, seventh and eighth here in qualifying for the moment. But that was the, just the first lap times being set. Those are the banker laps, like I, uh, uh, like I like to call them uh, gives you a good baseline to get our uh, get started in these sorts of qualifying sessions you don't want to be panicking towards the end not having set a time like the names of Dinya, Rachel, uh, Pringer, Rudinger, Price, Keith Lee, Vanna they have all not set times just yet no and they will don't worry about that they certainly will um, we have got uh from Dublin, Ireland, Ben Egan. How you doing, mate? Welcome. Uh, Dylan Fraser from Scotland. Nice. Watch from the Netherlands, Steph, there with the question, who do you think will make it through? Me, personally, I believe Kevin Siggy's obviously going to go through. He mathematically cannot not go through. Same as Moritz Lona. Um, Florian Hasso, I think, is going to be good. He's in P3. Fiducci, I think, is good. I genuinely believe it is between P5 and P6 only. Uh, I don't think anyone else, unless Jack Keithley gets two wins, which would be uh, very, very uh, impressive stuff. But I, I can't really see it happening. I think it's going to be either Leonard Krippner or Otto Viani and expect to see drivers such as Moritz Lona if he knows he can't win the championship going into race number two he'll be helping out Leonard Krippner as best he possibly can the seven points between P5 and P6 as it stands so yeah a, a big opportunity here for Leonard Krippner um, but the of course Otto Viani, the RHG driver will absolutely be giving everything here and it's in his own hands that's the main factor here uh, but as it stands he is currently uh, in seventh spot and Leonard Krippner is, he doesn't need any help because he's pole position so he's already going to gain three points as it stands so if it stays as it is right now Leonard Krippner would close the gap to P5 to four points so it is so vital that Ottaviani finds his form here he had an incredible start to the season but Connery he's kind of dropped off over the last couple of weeks yeah, he has. Uh, hasn't been able to complete, c compete on as a top level as he had done so in, in previous rounds of the season. Of course, we saw him have that fantastic fight with uh, Fiducci uh, at the Norris ring uh, at the... Uh, near enough the uh, start of the season here and uh, but ever since then it's kind of not been putting up as the, res the good results that we were expecting from him at least in, in the opening parts of the season which is okay sometimes you have good form for a couple of weeks then you drop off uh, you know your inverse can happen as well so we don't judge it too much however to win a championship such as this one to finish top five in a championship such as this one you do need that consistency otherwise you're going to be nowhere 
Yeah, 100 percent. You see Moritz Loder there. He's got to be careful because he doesn't really want to affect somebody else's lap here uh, because he's just peeled away and given the slipstream to another one of his drivers. So three minutes, 30 seconds to go here. He's actually going to pop into the pits uh, and then probably have a fresh set of rubber. Is he going to have time Siggy to put pole? another time? And I'm not sure he will. As Kevin Siggy does go out there and take pole. He's already leading the championship. But he absolutely wants to be winning this in style uh, he's, he's been doing it in style pretty much the, the entirety of this championship uh, but absolutely has found that little extra bit once again uh, we, as we were very uh, yeah, momentarily was on board with Ottaviani there he was already three tenths of a second down on the quickest time uh, in sector number one so again not really finding that form as it stands where's Keithley is Keithley even racing today like is, or, uh, is he in the list there he is well there he is he's number 44 he's not got a lap time in so yeah, really strange to see Keith Lee under this kind of pressure. He will not get a time. No, he will not get a time in now. So he's done. He's absolutely done here. And, and he's going to start from the back. And maybe he's got a little challenge with his community or his followers or something <laughs> to go last to first because he maybe feels like he can't really get into that top five. But I find that baffling because he can. Like, if he ever an amazing day today, which someone of his standard is absolutely capable of, not qualifying just makes very very uh, a lack of sense really to me we saw there a couple of Arnage competition cars i've got to forget that they're even in the race today um you know, you, you Arnage people out there know exactly what i'm talking about my shirt uh Fiducci in p3 still as it stands and we'll start the final attempt here as well but yeah it's kevin siggy show once again this championship has been all about him hasn't it and ultimately he has well he's dominating qualifying now because one and a half tenths in this field is massive yeah, it, it really is. Um, usually we see gaps a lot tighter than that one inside a, a tenth of a second, usually, um, between drivers in this series. So to be uh, able to set a time that's so much faster than everyone else by that margin is certainly very impressive. We're looking at Gianmarco Fiducci at the moment. P3 on the starting grid for race one here. Not too bad. A little bit of a, a handling issue coming off the corner there with the oversteer, but uh, able to gather it all up and continue on with his final lap. But you can see what that little moment has done. He's about, uh, well, just over a tenth and a half uh, down on sector one alone. Yeah, 100%. Uh, if anybody wants to indeed get involved, who's watching on television potentially, because we are talking to people who are watching over on Twitch and indeed on YouTube. If you're watching on television right now and you have Twitter, use the hashtag we love DTM. And maybe you've got some questions you want answered. Um, yeah, absolutely get yourself involved in that. I will keep refreshing the Twitter page and we'll have a nice little conversation. Uh, shout out to Sacer as well. Welcome uh, to the broadcast. Again, if you want to just say hello, get involved absolutely get yourselves involved here we always like to shout out everybody who's watching uh steph kramers has just said apparently um jack keithley's got a qualifying ban today so that's why information that we didn't get told connery <laughs> um so yeah luckily we've got someone more in the know than we are in the chat right now but apparently keithley didn't post that on to uh his instagram earlier on so yeah always worth going out and following these drivers starting grid as it stands is anybody going to improve they may do but as it stands then with about 30 seconds to go kevin siggy is on pole position leonard crippler in second needs a big day today already would have closed the gap by two points then to ottaviani although ottaviani has absolutely done what he needed to do. He's in P4. We could legitimately... I'm not going to mention everybody else here because we could legitimately see Ottaviani versus Krippner side by side on the track here battling for that final qualifying position. So again, the championship lead for Kevin Siggy over Morris Lona is quite a considerable gap. I'm not going to treat you like you're stupid at home. It's very unlikely that uh, that deficit is going to be overturned there by Morris Lona unless Siggy has a terrible day. But yeah, it really is about Alessandro Ottaviani and Leonard Krippner, P5 and P6 in the championship. Oh, it's uh, set up pretty nicely here, Connery. Yeah, I think so too. That's uh, that, that was a, a, a very welcome surprise there in qualifying. Um, usually we would see uh, Kripner Ottaviani just that little bit further away from each other uh, out on circuit. At least that has been the trend uh, so far this season. But to see those drivers that are on the bubble, so to speak, to get themselves that chance to compete in the boot camp to potentially at some point in the future get themselves a drive. Uh, in the DTM trophy, in the real world, um, uh, you know, next season, you know, that is an absolutely impressive thing to happen. And uh, I can't wait to see what these guys have uh, to show for us here in the race. Because, well, Kripner, of course, he does have a lot more friends on circuit, shall we say, uh, than uh, Ottaviani. But, you know, we, we've seen that not count for much before, have we? 
Yeah, that is very, very true. And maybe you've just tuned in, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and maybe throw you under the bus here a little bit, Connery. But let's have a road to the final video here while we do indeed have this warm up so you guys can see exactly how we got to this point at Portimao. It is the DTM Esports 2022 race number one. There are 12 in total, and who is going to set their stall here? And Siggy gets them away as they cross the line. And I tell you what, it's a phenomenal start here from Ottaviani. The Dur Esports team are in a little bit of trouble here as Lerner's actually up to P2. And indeed, Siggy he is going to get that overlap once again here. And I think for the first time, he's got his nose just about ahead here. And I tell you what, this might be a move. It might be configured. It could be beautiful. Siggy, though, still on that inside line. The BMW with that pace advantage as we come down in towards this very fast chicane before we head down into the hairpin. And it's done. He is our champion for the DTM Esports currently. And while well, race one of 2022's version is going to go to that number one car for Dura Esports, it's Moritz Lerner. Through up here at Teller, there the left hander, the very fast left hander in the middle of the lap. Look at how close Lerner, Lerner's overcommitted. That loses him a bit of time. And his last opportunity to get a move done on, into turn number one is coming up. Kevin Siggy went into the pit early. What a strategy call it was. The team Redline driver is going to take victory here in race two of the DTM Esports 2022. Sit off that final hairpin. We've got a great look here at Kevin Siggy. Siggy surely going to dive. He does. He makes it side by side here. And is he going to run out too far off the apex? But there's contact then between Otto Biani and Fiducci. Siggy does get up to P2. He was not involved in that incident whatsoever. He set it up perfectly well. But the day belongs to Hookfeld. The Swede takes the victory here for RAG. There's another attempt from Lona. Not got the overlap this time, but he goes for the surprise move. Down the inside at turn number one. Has he overcommitted to the exit of the corner, though? Someone who doesn't care about that is Kevin Siggy. The team red line driver crosses the line, takes his second win of the season, and undoubtedly will be the leader of the championship. So Lona's going to have another little look here around the outside this time in towards the chicane. The two oh, teams are fighting. Oh, it's brilliant. He's got him around the outside there. That's oh. an unbelievable move in the championship. He's going to finish in P3, but it's all about Moritz Lerner then, the DTM trophy driver, the current DTM Esports champion. Back to winning ways here at the Lousis Ring for race one. So, so strong, especially on the fresher tires that Siggy has compared to Crip. The look at him. He's all over the back Ooh. of him, and he's got a monster oh. of a run coming out of the final corner. The outside line is the favoured line. Of oh, no. He's actually... Oh, that's... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, bad day for Hookvelt. A really good day, though, for Moritz Lerner. He is our DTM Esports current champion. He's the reigning champion. And he had a bad week last time out at the Norris ring. But today is a double win for Moritz Lerner. And Siggy then forces him to make the decision round the outside. Can he give us a moment to behold once again? Moritz Lerner has got the overlap here. Oh, he has got the overlap. Curb being used. All of the curb being used. Siggy on the power a little bit earlier. It is going to be Kevin Siggy that will take race one here today at Spa. It's in fantastic performance from him had to make a couple of overtakes to do so we've got a battle for the lead Lona then still got that nose up in front they're door banging their way in towards the chicane here and you can see using all of the curb on the exit is indeed Kevin Siggy Moritz Lona though is still holding on that inside line round eight is going to go the way of Kevin Siggy. Absolutely deserves it there. As we then head in towards this double left-hander, he's got to go round the outside once again here if he wants P2. What a recovery this would be. He's going to run out of grip on the outside there. It's ushered them so slightly wide. Left the perfect amount of room. Look at Florian Hasse. He's making it difficult here. Mistake then from Kevin Siggy. Gets too close. Runs off circuit through the S's. So the top five are as they are. Lerner, Siggy, Hasse, Kripner. And Fiducci continuing to get the lead laps logged. As Siggy sticks it down the inside. Another attempt from the team Redline Ferrari. We will stay on board with this for the entirety of this final lap. There's a nice little battle though between... Oh, no. Uh, oh, no, there's a mistake here. Lona. Lona's going to be gifted a P2. And the team red line driver will win the race 10 of the DTM Esport 2022. And surprisingly, Moritz Lona does finish in second. Viducci is going to be absolutely gutted.
Well, there you go. That is how we got to this point. And now it's all about how this championship ends. It is indeed very hotly contested between our top two. And Kevin Siggy, actually, with that pole position, has extended his championship lead. And, well, with Morris Lona, is absolutely not going to be... Um, well, yeah, he's not going to be gaining any points for that qualifying as it stands. So I think Kevin Siggy right now, who was 54 points coming into it, is actually now 57 points clear going into race number two. Um, we've then got Krippner, who has gained two points on Ottaviani. So now there's a five-point difference between Alessandro Ottaviani and Leonard Krippner. Ottaviani starts fourth. Krippner starts in second spot. It's really between those two for the top five. So remember, the, t the driver that wins this championship will be our DTM Esports champion. That is a huge accolade. Of course, you cannot take a championship away but the prize is for the top five drivers they will go to a sighting event at the Lausitz ring in a couple of weeks time and the best candidate chosen by the DTM personnel will win themselves a fully paid for seat in the DTM trophy 2023 a full season so yeah a lot to play for here just get yourself into that top five if you're Moritz Lohner uh, or sorry if you're Kevin Siggy just go out there and make sure that you do indeed win it we're waiting for them all to grid up here 20 seconds to go Connery predictions is it going to be the kevin siggy show or are we going to see a surprise sprung here at portamount well S siggy de definitely has the potential to try and run away with this one especially with the qualifying performance that he was able to put up so i think all the action is going to be happening behind him i'm super excited for a potential ottaviani kripna battle that one is going to be absolutely crazy there's one car separating them at the moment um, in the form of Fiducci, uh, but i think that's going to be the main uh, sort of uh, area that we're going to be have to be looking at uh, here today because I don't think Siggy and Lona are going to really get close enough to each other uh, to be able to um, make any mark in terms of championship is concerned. So, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to Krippner versus Ottaviani. Very interesting here. We've got a bit of a different start here. They're doing a full lap. Normally, they just sort of shoot backwards a little bit, don't they? And uh, start. Oh, no, they do do a full lap every time, actually. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my own championships here. <laughs> I'm kind of getting confused. So they do do a full formation lap like this. So they will indeed line up side by side. Leonard Krippner in that BMW in second spot. Could he potentially go out there and fight Siggy? Does he really want to be fighting Siggy? Probably not. Just finishing ahead of Ottaviani here twice will more than likely guarantee him passage through to the top five. Uh, Fiducci, P3, again, he's in P4 currently in the championship. So it might be worth just taking a quick look actually uh, at this championship just to give you all the picture of exactly what could go down, what is going to happen. Again, Kevin Siggy is now 57 points clear due to three points for qualifying on P1. So he's clear of Moritz Lona and it's, it's almost impossible for Lona to really uh, overturn that deficit but you know stranger things have happened in motorsport or indeed sim racing Florian Hasser then is on 234 uh, yeah again if he has a terrible day today the Jan Marco Fiducci Ottaviani maybe they could catch up to him uh, who knows but again just keep yourself maybe in that top six top seven bracket for two races you're more than likely going to be absolutely fine Leonard Krippner though he is the one. He's already closed that gap. He's on 199 points now, uh, whereas Ottaviani is on 204. It's five points the difference between the two of them. Um, and, well, currently there's a position between them. They're second and fourth on our grid. If we just quickly check out the actual point system here as well. So just to tell you, if it was to finish as it is, which is very unlikely, 34 points will head the way to, indeed, Krippner, and 27 points would head the way of Ottaviani. So that's a difference there of seven points that means going into the next race Krippner would actually be two points clear here we go then still on the formation lap hopefully I have set that up nicely for you all to understand what is exactly going to go down you can see the tabletop there across the start finish this is race number 11 then of 12 of the season it's the DTM Esports 2022 we're here at Portimao for the first of two finale races. It's Kevin Siggy on pole in that Ferrari on the right-hand side of your screen. is Krippner in second. We're waiting for the green lights to pop up on our screens. And we are green light racing here. Green flag, indeed, up and away here. And it's a great start there from uh, Kevin Siggy, championship leader. And as you can see here, Fiducci and Ottaviani are both trying to challenge then for that second position. Neither of them get through. Fiducci with that Fordzilla car runs ever so slightly wide here. And I'll tell you what, Ottaviani, it's actually maybe going to get mugged off here by the likes of Morris Lona. Morris Lona knows he has to go out there and win this race at a minimum. So he is obviously going to put that pressure on. And Ottaviani then is not good from him. 
but ultimately we've also seen Fiducci grab a position here. So Leonard Krippner has dropped the spot, as has Ottaviani. Ottaviani though up the inside of the hairpin, side by side then with Morris Lona. Doesn't quite get a power down as early as the BMW has the inside line they thought for the kink here, but we'll have the outside line then for this double apex right hander. It should have Morris Lona the position for B4. He's got to try and hang around the outside. Again, don't worry about tyres in this race. You do not need to be worried about it. It's only 15 minutes long. But as it stands, it's still side by side between them. Almost three wide here, Connery. What a start. This battle is crazy between Ottaviani and, uh, well, Moritz Lona. Lona keeping himself ahead. For now, there's someone off the background. Vermeulen. Vermeulen's out into the gravel. Uh, doesn't take any casualties with him in that case. So everyone's still clean and running through. Uh, but uh, it does mean that uh, Moritz Lona able to secure himself ahead uh, of Ottaviani. Oh, behind Ottaviani. Sorry, Krippner's behind Ottaviani here. So this is perfect for him. What's happened here? When, how did he drop down? But right now, Leonard Krippner, then it was two positions ahead and needs to finish ahead of Ottaviani, is now behind him. So it's all in Ottaviani's hands here in race number one. It's a terrible race start here on lap one here for Leonard Krippner, currently sixth in the championship, had indeed made the gap to five points between him and Ottaviani. But as we cross the line for lap number one, it's Siggy, Fiducci, the two Ferraris off into the distance. Fiducci looks absolutely rapid right now. Lona is up to P3. Oh, contact between Krippner and Ottaviani. Oh, that is not ideal here at all. Krippner, I oh. think he's going to allow him the position. Oh, the rejoin's horrendous here. The two, oh, he's going to be here again. Three bits of contact in a row between the two drivers. Ottaviani is indeed going to continue. But you dissect that there, Connery. Not see a replay, unfortunately, of that, but that was well horrendous at all. Parts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ottaviani, of course, uh, contact from behind coming down into the corner. Um, get, you know, but the rejoin, like you said, I, I'm, I'm famous for calling them out, I suppose, here, Luke. That was uh, one of the worst ones that I've seen. Swinging back onto circuit, completely clattering. I think it was Florian Hasse uh, sending him into a spin, and he was only going on one trajectory up across the curb there, straight back into traffic and causing a whole bunch of carnage. Nothing that Hassa could have done about that. That was all out of Yanni with the awful rejoin on the circuit. The, the reason why he was put in that position, yes, that wasn't his fault from the contact from behind, but you can control your own car when it comes back on the circuit uh, when you're not in a slide or backwards. Yeah, 100% there again. It's, it's a tough split second decision you've got to make. But if he, can, if he doesn't rejoin silly there, doesn't create any contact, he's not going to gain any penalties for a fact because he's not done anything wrong. And more than likely, Leonard Krippner would be in a little bit of trouble. Um, hold on, has Krippner managed to stay P6? Hold on, yeah. how has that worked out here? So who was, oh, who was he? Was that not even Krippner that was involved the whole time there then? It was, uh, I got this completely wrong? It was Krippner getting into the back of Ottaviani, but Ottaviani came back onto track into Hassa. Um, right, okay, yeah. now it makes sense. Haas is P20 now. Right, okay, so I thought that Leonard Krippner had dropped all the way down there. I think they're both going to be in for a penalty, to yeah. be completely honest there. Um, realistically, Ottaviani probably should have made a decision to not rejoin um, well, Sillily. I know he's going to get funny like that. He will post in the, one of the chats because he likes to watch these back and stuff, and he'll be like, oh, they've called me out again. It wasn't very good, mate. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> um, but on the flip side, yeah, so he should have just rejoined, look, take your medicine, you know you're going to be behind Krippner, but Krippner would more than likely receive a penalty himself for putting Ottaviani in that position. I guess it's tough to make those, those split-second decisions, you know, with the amount of time you've got available. Keith Lee, by the way, with that qualifying ban, up to P, uh, well, 19, P18, he's battling uh, in the background there with Wanner as well. Uh, nice to see those two both going at it here uh, again. See Keith there with that cheesy grin on himself. Uh, but yeah, right now, it's, it's in Krippner's hands. We're not going to find out about penalties and stuff well we, i guess we will find out about penalties during this but as it stands Krippner is ahead he's got it he's going to indeed close the gap again looking at the points here uh p5 gets 24 p6 gets 22 so let's just for hypothetically sorry it was p6 and p7 22 and 20 so hypothetically as it stands right now it will be a two point uh, race in the final race of the season between the two of them. So there'll be two points separating uh, Ottaviani and Leonard Krippner going into the final race. So Ottaviani would still hold the advantage. 
Yeah, he would. So of course, uh, race control, they, they will be updating a little spreadsheet that we've been given uh, so that we can uh, sort of keep track of the points uh, as these races go on. They haven't uh, put in any updates to the sprint race just yet, but we uh, do expect to see that perhaps in a handful of minutes' time, just to give us a little bit of a better picture as to what's going on in terms of those points, even with all the instants that we've seen in this race so far. Of course, that does not include any potential penalties that might happen, I'll, I'll have to add, and so that's pre-warning you uh, of the point situation there. Uh, but uh, but yeah, for right now, well, it's undoubtable that Kevin C still leads the championship by an even wider margin than he did coming into this one. It's all about who finishes inside that top five, though. That's the main concern today. Yeah, 100%. And, and Fiducci, he is not going to attack Siggy. I would very much doubt. It's kind of, he doesn't need to. Uh, the only thing that really could mess up his day here is if he gets involved in something where he doesn't need to, and he ends up facing the wrong way and loses a load of positions here. So just keep yourself in that spot. You're golden. You don't need to be you know, putting any unneeded pressure on, and then we'll see you at allows this ring. It really is as simple as that. Um, and then as for Moritz Lona, it looks like we're going to see him at allows this ring for sure, as well as Kevin Siggy. Lona has to beat Siggy. It's not close enough here. Siggy's got too much pace. Only nine minutes left to go in this race. Unless Siggy, which we saw at the Norris ring, make a mistake. Boy, she made a little bit of a mistake there, actually, going in towards the um, second to last corner, did Kevin Siggy. And so Fiducci's not been able to take advantage of that. Uh, they've got their Max Pfeiffer, who was, for me, my driver of the day last time round, and he really has hit form at the right time as well p4 um he probably would have been maybe he just figured something out because he wasn't really up in the month of it at the start of the season now you know last week and this week really come to the forefront so good to see max still up there in p4 uh, and then we've got the isaac price who always seems to be in the month it somewhere he's currently in p5 uh, but then we've got that crippler otto viani battle so it might be just again worth just keeping an eye on on the otto viani crippler battle that's the main battle we need to be looking at today be honest with you um and yeah it's a case of ottaviani is going to still lead in the terms of the top five battle he will be fifth position in the championship going into the final race but it's going to be chipped way out and that sets us up beautifully well for indeed the final race it really does it really does so um you know do you think the penalties are going to be equal here because what we're expecting uh, both of them to get a penalty. However, I would say the severity of Ottaviani's incident was much worse than what uh, Krippner did to Ottaviani. So uh, if I had to put my steward's hat on, no one, no one should ever give me such a hat, by the way, uh, because <laughs> many reasons. But uh, if I am, then I would give a harsher penalty to Ottaviani than Krippner. So that might then influence uh, how this whole point situation changes later on as well. But then you've got to factor in Ottaviani's... Ottaviani was in that position because yeah. of the first incident. So, again, I'm not a steward. I don't ever <laughs> want to be a steward. Please just leave we, me alone. We don't, we don't, don't neither of us want the steward's hat. That's, that's no, what I'm saying. No. <laughs> well, I, my, my hair's too good for that. Uh, and you're, we don't want to be ruining your locks either. They, they've been grown out beautifully well. So we don't need that. But, yeah, for me, we'll just we'll figure it out. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure whether we're going to see it during the race or afterwards. Hopefully uh, it should be figured out during the race here. Uh, again, maybe you've got a bit more information on that as we see Michael Raschel being overtaken there by Peter Piska. Yeah, so uh, both Mercedes doing battle here. They are... It's a handful! Oh, Raschel's going to get pushed all the way to the pit wall there uh, by Pliska. Pliska getting, the, uh, getting the elbows out. And, well, through turn number one, Pliska is still able to hold on to that position. Raschel get a good run through the corner here. Might be able to make a challenge uh, in through this first sector right on his back bumper. Well, that was crazy there for, uh, <laughs> for Raschel. He was given a uh, car's width of space on the inside, up against the pit wall, and no more. Yeah, well, Pliska's got a reputation for, kind of, for that kind of driving, so it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be too surprised if you're Michael Raschel there, really. And at this stage in the competition, everyone's going to be fighting for every single inch of track there. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're battling for P1 or whether you're battling for P12 or P11, as we're battling for right now. Uh, they've also got Luciano Whitfoot just in behind as well. This should be very spicy indeed. Should be uh, Luciano Whitfoot's the, uh, the only Dutch driver uh, in this race. And, uh, well, doing okay out there. P13 is not too bad whatsoever. So that's, uh, you know, that's that's what I would call a decent result uh, for Luciano Vitvo. 
Uh, and of course, he's always looking to try and improve positions here uh, down through the order. He has uh, quite a few cars uh, for the taking as well, potentially, as we look back towards the, the train going off for P3 at the moment, headed up by Moritz Lohner, second place in the championship, then Max Pfeiffer, Isaac Price, then Leonard Krippner further behind. By the way, though, um, Postfioni has kind of fallen off the back of Krippner a little bit here. You can see there's a definite, definite split in the middle of that train. Uh, so to be honest, he's at risk of losing the slipstream to Krippner here, which is not going to help his situation. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, you know, you can just... <laughs> I think that Ottaviani may have damage, first and foremost, mm. from the contacts he's had there with Leonard Krippner. Uh, and Lona, I have no idea why he's off the pace here. It seems like the Ferrari is the power of choice around here. But Ottaviani, if he loses one more position here, ultimately it will go down to a tie. Uh, or it might be one point. So it might be one point between him and Krippner going into that final race. This is beautifully poised for us here today but Ottaviani needs to get a move on yeah, he really, really does and uh, well you know he has another race to get this done as well remember he has the uh, the endurance race coming up which is a different kettle of fish because you do have that scheduled stop to think about careful of getting the back end out there um, if he does that during the endurance race that's going to be a big uh, a bit of a bigger problem because you do want to try and conserve your tire life a little bit uh, in that endurance race uh, given uh, the much, much longer stints than what we see in this sprint race. Uh, but yeah, that, that second race, you know, it's uh, it has the potential to change things quite a bit just due to uh, how you can play around a, a little bit with that strategy. Got Hoogvelt here looking to maybe make a move here on Pinchers. This is really uh, going to help Ottaviani. Ottaviani just needs these two behind just to battle, just to give him a bit of breathing space. Only a few laps re remain of this race here. And actually, as they come across the line, it's probably going to be two laps left could be close potentially for three um again we'll find out when we find out it's like a game of, it's like a lottery every week we don't know exactly how many laps we left um because we don't know when they're going to cross the line so yeah it really is uh, this is good hookvelt and pitches battling does just give a little bit of respite then for uh, ottaviani although pinches very much just gapped here hookvelt so it looks like the ferrari again again to be fair, the Ferrari is uh, also hooked out in behind as well as three Ferraris here. It just looks like Ottaviani may be a little bit ghosted by what's happened earlier on in this race. He just lost his rhythm completely here. And it's almost the case of, I just need to get to the finish here in P7. Make sure that I'm in and amongst the championship running for the next race. Or at least be ahead going into the next race. Because then you know your destiny's in your own hands. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting to see how this goes down. Uh, yeah, it will be. But the, the thing that's going to be working out in Ottaviani's favour here is that you do get another qualification session for that second race. There's no reverse grid um, system uh, here in, the, in, in this DTM Esports 2022 season. Uh, so you do get uh, a fresh slate, so to speak, when it comes to your starting position for race two. So even if you have a terrible sprint race, that's not going to affect the race a little bit later on, apart from, like you said, psychologically, in which case, you know, <laughs> drivers deal with that in very, very different ways sometimes. But for Ottaviani, as long as he doesn't lose any more positions uh, and uh, comes across the line in that seventh place, he, he still has a chance uh, coming into that endurance race to, to make sure that he's able to get the points gap over Kripna. Uh, but he has made it a little bit tougher for himself. And of course, we still have to consider the penalties as well. Yeah, it's absolutely in his own hands still. I think it will be in his own hands be honest uh, as we will have two more laps remaining but looks like where's Siggy yeah Siggy's just crossed the line now so two more laps remain of this race here Fiducci would he maybe go for a p1 here I, I definitely feel like he's got the pace to potentially go out there and win this uh this season showed it last week and showing it right now he just doesn't need to that's the only worry for me that he just doesn't need to unless Siggy is put under severe pressure here and he just gets out of the way this is going to indeed give uh Siggy the championship here by the way, mm -hmm. just to let everybody know. So he will become our DTM Esports 2022 champion, regardless if he finishes in second, or indeed he could probably go down to seventh spot at this stage of the race, and Lona finishes in second, and he's still good to go. Um, so yeah, this is this is the race that Kevin Singy needed. He's also absolutely going to do it in style, as you would expect from him. He's such a, a superstar of a racer. So we've now got Whitford under, well, he's in behind Rachel now, so Whitford in the Munster here with Attila Digne in behind as well. Uh, very closely battling here. I'm sure we're going to see some contact between them all before the end here. It's kind of like the last day of school where you don't really learn anything, do you? You just turn up and you just want to go there and burn your ties and laugh at your mates and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, my last day of school was, I don't know, a long time ago, nearly 20 years ago. So to be fair, it may be a lot different these days. Who knows?
Yeah, I'm just thinking. I, I thought mine wasn't too long ago either, but then again, I've you know I've completely finished university about two years ago, so it's like yeah. Um, but look at this battle though. Vitvo and Dinya just absolutely going at this one, hammer on tongs. And well, Dinya's going to lose out coming off the corner a little bit here. He'll try and dart back to the outside to get a better line through the long right-handers. They descend the hill just a little bit through there in towards the final sector. But now we have had Kevin Siggy come across the line. This is going to be the start of the final lap here at Portimao for the final sprint race of the season. Through turn two, we go up in towards turn number three then with Kevin Siggy. Morris Lona again leading the group of cars here. But let's, give, let's get on board with our champion elect, Kevin Siggy, as he's now coming down in towards this hairpin. See in the rear view, he's got a Ferrari there, but nothing to be really too worried about here. Now it's just all about make sure you hit your brake marks. You've done all the hard work here. Hit the apex on the inside. Get on that power nice and early. Run over that Astro turf. And the last thing you want right now is any slowdown penalties or anything like that or make the mistake by getting on the power a little bit too early. You've done all of the hard work. Pfeiffer and uh, Isaac Price looks like they're battling in the background. Uh, again, it's more indeed just a bit of fun at the end of the season really for those two drivers specifically uh, as we again are on board in towards the middle of sector number two we are nearly embarking upon the final sector of our final sprint race of the season which will indeed give our champion kevin siggy the momentum he needs the points he needs to be our champion for 2022 with a race to spare through the left hand and then up the hill and then we very quickly come down the hill two corners then remain here for kevin siggy he's been so so super strong throughout the season we've still got one more race to come it's the endurance race but it doesn't matter as we round that final turn hold on to the grip on the inside let that car swing out to the outside team red lines kevin siggy is not only going to win the first race here at portamao but he will officially be our dtm esports champion 2022 with one race to go he's been superb this season he deserves all of the credit in the world and absolutely dominates here at Portimao. Fantastic stuff. Oh, Lona's crashed out across the line. He gets third place, however. It didn't affect his position, but there must have been an altercation there between Lona and potentially Pfeiffer, unless that was just celebratory for Morris Lona, just trying to cross the line in style. We've still got one more race to go, by the way, Morris, so don't, uh, don't do it so, that so early. But he knows now that he can't get himself the championship win because Siggy has that on lockdown now. Uh, that one is not going to change, even though these results are unofficial. There was nothing involved in Siggy. So, yeah, Siggy, your DTM Esports 2022 champion. Yeah, he absolutely deserves it. Lona has indeed fought throughout the season. He has been either first, second or third. If you take Norris Ring out of the equation, Morris Lona has been first, second and third. It was only first and second up until this race today. He's been on the podium every single race other than the Norris Ring. So it really was those two races where it just did not go right for him. Kevin Siggy, though, 1.4 seconds clear then of Fiducci. Fiducci guaranteeing his spot then through to the top five. Moritz Lona is already through with the top five as well. Uh, so it really is all about just the last two drivers to get, or the last one driver really, to get that spot through to the next stage of this competition. Max Pfeiffer then does take P4. We've then got Isaac Price in the top five. Krippner is in a P6. Otto Viani does take a P7. They've got uh, Pinchez and Hookvelt and Gassner as your top 10. Yep, cycling thing to the top. Pliska. Yeah, yeah Pliska, P P11, Arshall P12. Uh, sorry for stealing this from me, Luke, but uh, Luciano Vipvot, uh, P13 here today. And, uh, well, Jack Ethy, great recovery from a qualifying ban. He moves his way through the field up to 16th does indeed he's got Rudinger in behind him Mosin uh, one of our medium marked wildcard drivers here you can see that by the red and white medium marked livery we then got Vermeulen who we saw off into the gravel earlier on in the race he picks up P19 and then Fox picks up P number 20 so there you go ladies and gentlemen that is indeed race number one we have indeed crowned our champion is it going to be in super style though with a double win because we've still got our feature race to come or our endurance race to come we will indeed get straight involved with that after a little commercial break. Auto Hero ist dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. <lacht>
Welcome back then, ladies and gentle cars. It is a DTM Esports 2022 finale here at Portimao. We've already crowned our champion, Kevin Siggy, but will he go out in style? Will he go out there and produce a second victory in a row uh, and also stop anyone else from winning a race this season? We've only had three different winners this season so far. That's him, Moritz Lona, and indeed Christopher Hugvelt. Uh, is he going to be able to take one more victory? Can Gianmarco Fiducci, who I think is probably guaranteed, well, yeah, he's guaranteed himself through as a top five driver now. Would he be able to attack Kevin Siggy? I felt like, for the most part in that race, he had the pace, but then just dropped off in maybe the last couple of laps. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, but then again, it also might just be that you know Siggy was just um, <laughs> was just sort of backing off of things a little bit and, and making sure that he could actually get to the Jacob flag because that would be the thing that wins in the championship in that in that uh, race. You know, he can't couldn't afford to make a mistake, have him heavy impact with a barrier or another car. And then all of a sudden, we see Moritz Lohner back within a shot of the championship for the final race of the season. So, uh, so yeah, see, he did all that he needed to do and nothing more. And potentially, he can have a little bit of fun for this insurance race as well, knowing that everything is secured in his favor. Maybe not too much fun, though, because, of course, the DTM uh, administrators, the DTM judges, uh, shall we say, will we'll still be looking at every single race this season, I would have thought. So uh, can't mess around too much. Yeah, but I don't think that Kevin Siggy has fun in his vocabulary, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. He's uh, very much all about work. Uh, as you see there, the Dura Esports contingent all out there in force. Again, you know, it's not going to be the case that they're going to go out there and win the championship. But Moritz Lohner will look to try and at least get P2 in the championship, which, he, again, is pretty much guaranteed to. He probably already is guaranteed, actually, uh, judging by the points. What were the points he came into this? Should I have a quick look? Uh, yeah, Lohner. Oh, he, yeah, he was already Miles Cliff P2 as well. So I'm sure he'll be looking to probably help Leonard Krippner. Leonard Krippner versus Ottaviani is really where it's at. So uh, we've just had the notion, yeah, we've just been told that the points are now up to date. So exactly what is the gap then, Connery, between Ottaviani and Leonard Krippner? Well, let's have a look. It is three points between Ottaviani oh. and Krippner. Ottaviani currently ahead by those three points. So it is very, very close for that final slot uh, for the DTM Trophy Boot Camp. And that's what the top five get themselves a slot into. So yeah, this is gonna come all down to this race and potentially all down to a, a single position, especially if they both uh, finish towards the top of the order due to the points caps. I've just had a, I hope this is the case. Kevin Siggy on board with him, where is he? Uh, let's have a look because I do not, well, he hasn't set a time yet, but there he is. It, oh, well, we'll see right now. Oh no, he's on an outlap here. Is there the potential for him to give us a little bit of uh, a bit of, bit of a show, if you like, a little bit of a, I'm going to start from the back here. Last to first challenge. <laughs> it's very rare at this kind of a 
or this kind of this level of a of a championship that you get that opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, I don't think Ke Kevin Singh's got no no fun in his vocabulary. We've already established that. I'm just it's a pipe dream, Connery. I got excited. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I'll guess we'll see. But uh, at least to the early stages of qualifying, only 15 drivers actually set themselves a time first time of asking. So that was actually a little bit less than what we saw uh, in qualifying one. And it is for Ducci to the top of the order. But then Hergfeld is only, is well, I say only two tenths of a second behind. Two tenths of a second is a country mile here in a series such as this one. Uh, it, you have to have to recalibrate your perspective a little bit when you talk about uh, some of the top drivers on, uh, well, any racing simulator that you can think of. Uh, but uh, Hergfeld felt you know it's been a, you know, I wouldn't you know completely write off this season for Hegfeld he's had a good run of it um, however again it's just all about the consistency in terms of results that sort of uh, hurt him a little bit yeah and I just I think maybe the level's just a little bit above uh, where he's at right now he's yeah. young he'll get there the thing is I think the left the, the level here the top of the tree in this championship is ridiculous, Connery. If we, you know, especially on this sim, like these names, I probably would say if you, I take Kevin Siggy out of the equation here, uh, as Vanna is still helping the Dury Sports yeah. team there <laughs> again, still grinds my gears, makes me pretty pretty upset that that's still happening. Um, but again, Kevin Siggy hasn't had any of that help from any other team, hasn't had any teammates to help him, and he's still gone out there and won, which that puts a smile on my face. To be honest, he absolutely deserves it. Um, but yeah. I, I just think Hookvelt is just just below that top top level on race room, like for this grid specifically. I saw what he's just done in the ad. <laughs> probably best not to mention that. But um, yeah, I'm not getting involved in that that show to be honest of um, what happened there. But yeah, it's just just a little bit below. But he's also been a race winner this season, so mm -hmm. he's not far off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it was. Again, it's sort of been a tale of two seasons for Hergfeld in, in race room esports uh, uh, for 2022. In, in ADAC, he had, uh, you know, he did have those consistent results in the first part of the season that ended up uh, helping win the championship. Of course, there was a little bit of a dramatic finish after that, which uh, you alluded to there, Luke. But either way, it has been the confirmation that Hergfeld did win that championship. So certainly on a good day has the capability to compete up there with the best. It's uh, just... Like you said, here in this DTM series on this starting grid in particular, it's been a bit more of a struggle. We are into the final couple of minutes of qualifying, though. Siggy still provisional pole position. Fiducci does close the gap a little bit to him in terms of lap time. It's just uh, one, uh, just under one and a half tenths of a second now between P1, P2. Where is Marge Lona? There he is, coming across the line now. He's on for a personal best, but, uh, and, yep, does improve at least briefly up into P4, but then has to comes and steals the party a little bit and gets him up into third. Yeah, 100%. Well, I have one thing that really is interesting here is that Leonard Kripner's P6 and where's Ottaviani? So Kripner will get another opportunity here. Ottaviani on his own here in the RHG eSports car will have no help here. It has to be a perfect lap, really. Again, leads Kripner by three points in that battle for the top five. And right now, the difference between P6 and P9 in terms of the points, P6 gets 22, P9 gets 16. So he would lose out by three points as it stands. So neither are getting any bonus points for qualifying. So it really does come down to this final lap here. Uh, as we've just seen Hookbelt improve, or uh, yeah, Hookbelt's just improved again. Uh, he's actually just displaced Morris Lona. Didn't uh, change the position there of Leonardo Kripner because Hookbelt was already in five. Uh, but as it stands, the front five, what, three tenths of a second between them? I'm hoping to see a bit of a better race than race number one, if I'm honest. It becomes dispersed really, really quickly because of poor driving standards, if I'm yeah. going to be completely honest. It's split the field up, really. But I'm hoping everyone's on best behavior. Uh, we always sort of think that the first race is going to be the crazy race and it never tends to be so i hope that that doesn't mean that this race is going to be even more crazy uh, just going off of historically this in this championship uh, i want it to be nice and clean everyone stays nice and close uh, and hopefully we have a nice battle on our hands i mean it's hard to say um for some drivers the pressure might be off a little bit definitely if you're kevin ziggy because you can dnf from this race and, and it still won't matter with regards to championship however there are some drivers like ottaviani like Kripner that are going to be fighting for the entire hour that this insurance race has to run to try and get themselves a slot in that boot camp 
for the DTM Trophy Drive next season. So we got ourselves our qualifying results showed a little early here with Kevin Siggy up into pole position, but we'll get to see whether Rotti Valley can improve his time. He did do a personal best through Sector 2. It wasn't a great Sector 1, however, so we'll wait and see uh, what happens with him coming up across the line. P number 9 for now. He would like a few more positions further up the starting grid. Across the line he comes. Does he improve? He does. Oh, does? Oh! Right behind him. Right behind him. So Kripner is, what, two, uh, sorry, three points behind Otto Viani, but starts one position ahead of him as it stands. Again, showing you the actual, or, or, or telling you what the points mean this season. Actually, yeah, show the points on screen here, Connery. So Otto Viani and Kripner is between those two for top five in this championship. Remember, the top five will go to the sighting event uh, at the Lausitz Ring in the middle of May at the DTM event here. So as it stands, P6 and P7, it is 22 points well, will be between the two of them. Sorry, can you show me the, the uh, points breakdown? My bad. Yeah, no, those apologize. are the old points. Um, there we so, yeah. go. There's the points so, breakdown. Right now, if it was to be finish as it starts, again, we probably know that won't happen, but just to give you a, a perspective as to how this is going to go down, Kripner would be uh, would gain 22 points and it would be Ottaviani that gains 20. Ottaviani would still be one point ahead at the end of the day. It is that close, ladies and gentlemen. It is between Ottaviani, it is between Leonard Kripner to qualify for our sighting event and potentially gain themselves a drive in the DTM Trophy 2023. It is so, so close here, Connery. It could, this is perfect, set up perfect. Yeah, it, it is. And uh, well, in terms of the points coming out of that previous race, we also have uh, Florian Hasse, who's a handful of points more, more points ahead, and he's pretty secure with the third place starting position here today as well. Um, Fiducci's a little bit further up as well. Let's see. Um, and well, Keatley is still too far adrift uh, with regards to that top five, uh, that it's uh, going to be very, very, very unlikely, if not impossible, for him uh, to be able to get inside the top five. So yeah, it is basically uh, Kripner versus Ottaviani now for that final slot for the DTM Trophy Boot Camp. We've got about four and a half minutes uh, till we get that final endurance race started. Of course, remember that final endurance race, one hour long scheduled pit stop. Uh, where you have to take the fuel and the tires. No shenanigans of taking no tires and just putting the fuel to the end here in this one. It has to be a full pit stop service. And I can't wait for it. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to focus on Leonard Kripner and Ottaviani, of course, for, for, for the most part of this race. We will try and get as many battles on screen as possible, but that is the story we need to tell here. The front four, pretty much guaranteed to go through um, as it stands. Fiducci, Hassa, Lona, and indeed uh, Siggy. They're, those four are going to be uh, the top four in this championship. Who is going to get top five? So remember, we've got DTM Esports champion. Kevin Siggy's done that. He's sewn that up. Lovely old job from him. But it's all about the five drivers that will go to this sighting event and will then be judged and whoever is the best candidate from those five will receive that prize of a DTM Trophy 2023 drive. We've got ourselves three minutes, 30 seconds on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know where you're watching from around the world. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Twitch right now, get yourselves involved in the chat. I'll give you a shout out. I promise you I'll give you a shout out. And also, if you want to get involved on Twitter, if you're watching on television right now, hashtag we love DTM. Hashtag we love DTM on Twitter and I will indeed try my best to refresh and keep up to date with anyone that posts on there and says hello. So yeah, that's the ways of getting in contact with the stream today. Connery, it is so perfectly poised. If they were to finish as they finish or as they start this race, it'll be one point between them. Ottaviani would hold on by the skin of his teeth. There's going to be some twists and turns here, but I've asked you who's going to win races. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Who is going to get that P5 spot? Will it be Kripner or will it be Ottaviani? I think the advantage goes to Kripner at the moment. Um, even though he is behind in terms of points coming into this one, he has something that's, uh, uh, that Ottaviani doesn't, and that is other team cars. Um, he can work together with his dear eSports teammates, try and put as many of those between himself and, uh, and Ottaviani as is physically possible. And uh, he can use his teammates to cause a little bit of carn teammates to cause a little bit of carnage. All within the rules, of course. We're not expecting anyone to deliberately wreck anyone out or anything like that. Um, but uh, that is really going to work in Kripner's favour here, and it's going to be a, a bit of a struggle for Ottaviani to keep himself out of the way of all of that. However, uh, we saw this in a different series, even with all the Dirty Esports teammates working together, sometimes they still can't get it done. So it's still a big unknown, but I have to say Kripner for this instance. 
Yep, I agree with you on that, mate. I really do agree with you on that one. I, I will say this, it's in Ottaviani's hands. So, for me, yes, the Dur Esports cars, if it comes to the last couple of minutes and they've got one car like Lona ahead or Hassa ahead of Kripner, of course they could drop and give the position to Kripner. That's if Kripner is ahead of Ottaviani. So Ottaviani is in his own hands here. For me, he has to go out there and make the overtake. He has to get ahead of Kripner. Because right now, yeah, of course, by the way the points are, he's fine. He's going to be one point clear. He cannot leave it to chance like that. He has to be ahead just so that the, he takes that one factor away from Dura Esports. He takes that opportunity of dropping a position to give Kripner an extra few points because he's ultimately ahead. He will gain more than Kripner. It's going to be fascinating here. And again, you said it, you know, the Dura Esports team, they've got it nailed in terms of how to work together. Um, but it's another championship where they, again, haven't got it done, have they? Kevin Siggy has been their kryptonite. Christopher Hoogvelt has been their kryptonite on race room. So it, there's one more chance here to go out there and, and help a teammate get into a decent position in their top five. Will they succeed? Well, who knows? We're about to find out here. Here is Hoogvelt. Again, he's the only other driver apart from Lona and indeed uh, Kevin Siggy that has won a race this season. Uh, he won a race at the Norris Ring. Um, yes, it did take Kevin Siggy binning it out of the final corner, but it is what it is. Still went up there and took that victory. Sparks fly up. 30 seconds to go, Connery. It's poised perfectly. It's the final race of the DTM Esports. It's been a blast this season. Have we got one more special treat in store? I think we might. Remember, though, as well, Kirkfeld, he is part of RHG Esports now, as his livery says. He does need to update his team name in race room, I will say that. But uh, uh, but either way, he's one that could potentially give a little bit of assistance to Ottaviani if he can get a little bit further up through the field in this final race of the season. Time has expired here in the warm-up. Kripner doing, uh, giving us a little bit of a show with the drift and the donut uh, there coming through the right-hander. But Skate oh, Face is on well, now. Hold on. That's a really good point there, because there's a pit stop in this. Could it be, even if he's behind, could someone like Hoogvelt potentially stay out mm. a lot longer than the other teams and potentially do some slower lap times because the tyres just aren't really there, mm -hmm. you know? There's, there's actually a lot of factors in this that I didn't That's... think of. Um, of course, with uh, eSports, they've got 763 cars to try and do that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's still advantage them. But RAG, they're, they're relatively new in terms of the sim racing world. and They've instantly uh, etched their name as to, as to one of the very best out there. Uh, is this one more opportunity for them to showcase that as well? The team side of this. So, for instance, this, well, ironically, this is a solo championship. But we are talking about teams helping each other out when it comes to this final race. Uh, one driver who doesn't care about that, Kevin Siggy, DTM Esports 2022 champion. He is absolutely in dreamland right now. He will start pole position once again. Uh, they've got Fiducci in second spot. That's how they finished in race number one. Uh, we don't really need to be too worried about the front drivers. We will indeed, of course, see them battling out for position, but it does become all about P6 and P7 on the grid for P5 in the championship. One formation lap to go here, Connery. Have you got any predictions here? Uh, there's going to be a lot of shenanigans in this race, I think. Um, uh, of course, it's both in RHG's uh, interest and, of course, in Dura Esports' interest to, to get their driver into that uh, final qualification spot for the for the ETM Trophy boot camp. So there's going to be a, a lot of... Uh, uh, well, a lot of blocking, I think. <laughs> a lot of big attempted passes just to rattle each driver's cages. And of course, once we get to that scheduled pit stop as well, we may even see some drama there as well with secondary, tertiary uh, drivers staying out trying to help uh, their driver get themselves that slot for the DTM boot camp. So there's a lot to talk about here at Portimao. I can't wait for it. It's not just going to be the drivers 1v1 out there on circuit. Yes, there's just one position separating Kripner and Ottaviani right now for that final slot and only a handful of points. Uh, but, you know, it might not be decided between the two of them with a the fight on track. It might be decided on who can get the most help from outside parties. Yep. It's... It's all to play for. It's hard, hardly anything we can really predict here. There's so many different factors. Just hoping for a very, very good race. Uh, looks like we've only got 21 of the 23 that started the day on the grid. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's all of it's just less factors really for uh, the drivers that we know are in the hunt for the top five. So it comes down to this then. Leonard Kripner and Ottaviani. Kripner is currently in P6. Ottaviani is in P7. And Hoogveld. Oh, sorry. I thought Hoogveld was starting in P8. 
Uh, so this actually is massive here, isn't it? Yeah, uh, this is a, <laughs> uh, another, yeah, having Hoogveld ahead of you makes it even easier here for someone like Ottaviani to really gain from the situation. So I didn't realize Hoogveld was that high. I thought he was genuinely P8 here. So that makes things super, super interesting. They are now going to form up side by side. We've got one hour of racing. A 30-minute pit window will indeed open up as well during this. At 15 minutes, you'll see a red box next to their name. When that goes green, that means that you know that they've done their pit stop. Strategy has been massive every single week so far during this DTM Esports 2022 season. It will be as big today, if not more so, because of what is on the line. Kevin Siggy, whose pole position is our champion. Viducci will finish third in this championship. It will be indeed Lona, who's fifth on the grid, who finishes second. And Hassa will finish fourth in the championship. But the battle for that top five and the prizes is all between P6 and P7. Kripner versus Ottaviani. It's the final race of the DTM Esports 2022. And Siggy gets us away. It's green light racing here at Portimao. Down in towards turn one, we will go. And Siggy straight away, straight across there. Beautiful stuff here. <clears throat> Excuse me there. As Hookveld up into P3 and absolutely playing the team game here for RHG. As you can see, though, it is a potential oh. move up the inside. Oh, it's contact. There's a three wide there. And I think teammates are taking each other out there. And I'll tell you what, Ottaviani is ahead of Primner. So Ottaviani set one up the inside there. Knew it's going to be three wide, but he did nothing wrong. He hit the apex there. The two BMWs then, of Florian Hasser, and I think it was Kripner as well. They've had contact. Hasser was on the outside. He got spun around. But the big drama here is we thought that Dur Esports had it all in their own hands because they had three cars up ahead of Ottaviani. They have none now. Hookvelt and Ottaviani are P3 and P4. The RHG team can work together now and try and help Ottaviani get through to our top five. That might be a, a situation that's influenced by the stewards as well because it was a big dive to the inside from Ottaviani, making it three wide in towards the breaking zone of turn three. So the, the stewards will still have to look at that so we've got an active investigation from race one we've now possibly possibly you have to ask the students yourself uh we got an active investigation for race number two as well to sort out because i'm not sure oh someone oh. else is around there that was an arnage car that's around and also another um a, another dirty sports car that's michael Rachel around as well jonas vanner well we can technically call him a dirty sports car with how much he's been helping them in qualifying over the course of this season as well so more drama towards the very back of the field crossing the line for the first time here in this endurance race siggy leads from fiducci from hergfeld from ottaviani that's worked out pretty nicely for rhg esports however do they draw the ire of the stewards yeah very interesting there again i've only seen it once i've not seen a replay mm. of this but i just don't think i think ottaviani hit the apex there as well i think it was the two bmws that really had the contact i'm not sure as to whether he influenced that. I would need to see it again, but from my initial view, I think that the I think Kripner has just been ghosted there more than anything, and then just run out a little bit wide, and Hassa was the uh, unfortunate driver on the outside. So I just think it was kind of a case of, oh my God, he's up my inside. I need to take avoiding action. And actually, I don't think he needed to. I think it was a very well-calculated move there from the Ferrari. Uh, but again, I've seen it once. Who knows? Uh, we've So Siggy, Fiducci, Hookvel, Ottaviani, four Ferraris then lead out this race here. They have definitely been the, uh, the, or it's been the car of the field. Uh, a lot of these drivers are the stars of the field, of course. Two of them have gone out and been race winners this season with Hookvelt and P3 and Siggy P1. Um, what about Morris Lona? Then P8, then not a good start for him at all, really. Uh, he's down in P8. Again, he was never able to, he's never going to be winning the championship. Now it's impossible for him to do so, but it would have been nice for him to go out there with a bang and potentially get that P1. Already driving in the DTM Trophy, to be fair. So uh, he's got nothing to be too worried about. He's already in the DTM Trophy season. He's in for a, his second season in a row for FK Performance Motorsport. Uh, shout out to Flo Flo as well. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're all well. Uh, but as we head towards the end of lap number two it is again same as race number one siggy versus fiducci fiducci may be a little bit further back than he was at this stage of race number one hookvelt in p3 can he spring a surprise here uh can he <laughs> imagine he goes out and wins this race and all of the things i was saying about him uh, earlier on again i meant it in the nicest way possible i said there's a lot of room for improvement for him uh, but he might go out there and win this race and really prove me wrong yeah, it could do. Uh, I mean, it's not outside the realms of possibility whatsoever. Remember, we have uh, just under 57 minutes of this uh, race to run just yet. So still a lot of stories to be told. Having a look at the uh, our lovely stream chats here, uh, Steph Kramers thinks that that dive from Ottavani is too much. He pushed Krippner into Hassa. 
Uh, so that's that's the point of view of one of our viewers. Uh, of course, we were only able to get uh, you know have a look at it once here because we are unable to do replays here, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, but yeah, that's the situation. Of course, the stewards will have much many more angles of that once they get the hold of the replay file and look at it after the race as well. Um, so you know we'll have to see. It wasn't the clearest view that we got on our cameras. I did see the dive to the inside from Ottaviani. I didn't quite see the contact coming through the middle of the apex though that will be the key thing when it comes to a, uh, a steward's decision i will say this though ottaviani needs to run this race now like he's got a penalty not, not just from race one but from potentially race two as well so that means he needs to get as much time between himself and kryptonite as is possible to absorb a potential three or even five second penalty yeah, he's going to be 100 percent going to be expecting um, Hugfeld to get out of the way, but I think he's actually got the pace to to make this overtake anyway. He seems to have closed up relatively nicely. Uh, I will go on the person you were talking about in the chat as well. Steph seems like he's uh, very much a fan of Dur Esports as well, so <laughs> maybe some rose tinted glasses on uh, from the initial there. From what I from what we saw there, it didn't look too crazy uh, really from Ottaviani. Again, stewards will decide there, uh, but yeah, everyone's going to support their favorite team. I think Hugfeld's oh. making it easy now. He's done it. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> R8G. Are absolutely playing a team game. If you wanted any proof, you've just seen it there. So Hoogvel now, I guess, backs up Pack, does he? He, he? he just makes it as hard for the BMW as possible, basically parks it on every apex. And if he can maybe hold them up for two, three laps, give a maybe a five second advantage here to someone like Ottaviani, this is huge. Although, I think Ottaviani would probably prefer Hoogvel just to drive as quickly as he possibly can. and maybe just keep that position in between the two of them. Yeah, Hergfeld's job now is to do his, to do his best, what should we say, yeah, Jason Plato impression, if you're familiar with uh, the BTCC, uh, just park it on every single apex, just to try and keep everyone behind you. Um, that's his task, and you know that. Will, look at the gap that Gottavioni's got already. It's six tenths of a second, extending to seven tenths of a second, so Hergfeld has started doing this already. Yeah, he's absolutely trying to make that gap as big as possible here, and I just think the, the Ferrari is He's probably maybe going to bait Krippner into taking him out yeah. as well, or maybe trying to force something. It's just so many things at play here. Uh, we've got Vitas in the chat there. Old man Isaac Price getting three positions in both races. Yeah, he is an old man. Oh, they, <laughs> look at that on the apex there. Wow, okay. What are you, are you thinking you're going to get a speed into get Hookvelt? What's going on here? That was the most obvious break on the apex I think I've ever seen in sim racing. Um, and now you can see he's got a gap there. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't like I don't like the way they're doing things, but if we're going to be honest, would Durr do the same in the in the uh, opposite position? Absolutely. Have we seen it from them? Yes. Have we seen shenanigans from them in qualifying? Yes. So the, it was to be expected every day of the week and maybe twice on Sunday. Yeah, here's the big attempt around the outside for Kripna. That's a huge run around the outside, off the circuit a little bit. So track limits to be concerned about. But Hoogfeld still has the inside, still has the position. Oh, from he's behind. Been Kripna's around. That's it. That's it. That's it done. It doesn't matter about penalties. I think he's done here because uh, it was Isaac Price that caused that. And well, his, him and him and Hoogfeld battling for position. They both get stuck on the apex there, and Price is kind of a bit of an innocent bystander there. Again, with his age, you know, not being able to react quick enough. That's a, again, that's a joke. Um, yeah, it, it really is a case of they both just stopped on the apex effectively, and Price is just tangled ever so slightly in backwards. More free positions for him. Uh, Moritz Lona now in behind in P6 here. I think Price may be in the running for a penalty again if you get hit from behind. It's normally just power and fault on the normal road. So racing tends to be the same there as well. So I would imagine it is his fault. But on the flip side, I'm not sure there's much he could have done about that. But the big, yeah, the big problem here really for Kripner is that he's now down in P16. And I'm, I don't know how, what kind of penalty Ottaviani would need now to not be uh, battling for that P5 or be in that P5. He maybe need to be, I don't know, disqualified mm. from the race. Like, yeah. and, you know, he hasn't done anything that crazy to warrant a disqualification from a race here. So Kripner, keep an eye on him. Kripner has to make up positions here as many as he possibly can before the end of this race. And he probably needs a little bit of help here from his Dur Esports teammates as well. So Kripner now P15. Uh, Florian Hasser's just up ahead. So as soon as he, if he can creep up to the back of Hasser here, he knows Hasser's going to get out of the way. Uh, we've then, then got... Only Lona, really, to be fair, isn't it? It's only yeah. Lona up ahead. So he's definitely going to gain two spots, I would imagine. Say so if, if Lona and uh, Hassan do not get out of the way here, given the best possible opportunities, then they're just not really playing the team game. And we've seen a DTM just last year. 
that the team game or manufacture game is a big factor. So I'm expecting to see that here today. Yeah, we uh, of course don't have team or manufacturer points this season. I have to wonder if that potentially might be a thing later on. I don't have any inside info, by the way, so there's nothing I can say that uh, will give you any clues about what's happening for any potential next season. But uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be an interesting thing to implement, uh, that's for sure. And uh, just sort of has the esports and the real life DTM mirror, the, mirror each other just that little bit more. Um, but. But yeah, it's it's going to be a very, very tough and long road back now for, for Kripner, even if it is possible. Um, that's the situation. It's, uh, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can say, yeah, okay, we've got 50 minutes of this race to go. We've still got that scheduled pit stop. Yes, so we can, we can factor all of that in. But regardless, it's still, what, at this point, probably around about, let's see on that left-hand side, turn to Kripner, 16 seconds off the leader. Um, about 10 seconds back from where he was previously. So, again, it's not impossible to make up, but, uh, yeah, that's that's a big struggle. And he needs to be hoping for a penalty from Ottaviani as well. Yeah, basically, for me, Kripner has to come in at the f first minute of the pit window open. He needs to come into the pits, and he needs to have fresh rubber and just fly and hope to get track position. That then just defend for his life at the end. That's the only option he has here for me. I, I don't know what you think on that, Connery. But I think that's the only option he has. Yeah, he needs the trap position uh, first and foremost, and then he can try and uh, make that the widest uh, BMW ever on that uh, final stint when everyone else is on fresh tyres trying to lock back onto the back of him. So uh, for Kripner, well, he, he doesn't have anyone in immediately ahead of him. Of course, we've got uh, Hasser and Mosin uh, a little bit further down the road by about two seconds. So um, I, I think as soon as he catches a bit of traffic and the pit window is open, that's when he's going to come down in. Yeah, 100%. Again, yeah, if he can maybe extend it for a couple of laps, uh, it, it makes it a little bit easier later on in the, in the race. But for me, yeah, it's coming as early as you possibly can. Get that fresh rubber on. Just go out there, lap like it's qualifying for 49 minutes. It's, it's as simple as that. And to be fair, in sim racing, everyone does lap like it's qualifying. It's kind of a little bit different to uh, the real world where they have to take it a little bit easier. In sim racing, you can be a little bit more aggressive, I would say. So, yeah, it's, Kripner could do something special here, but he has to do something special here. It's not a case if he could. He absolutely has to. I'm not sure he's got it in him. I'm, I'm, you know, if the race was three hours long, I think there might be that opportunity. I'm just not sure in an hour. It's quite going to be enough. Yeah, I, I'm of the same opinion uh, in that instance. It's, you know, I can't be wrong. I have been wrong on, on a good few occasions. You know, uh, no one has a crystal ball that can predict the future absolutely perfectly. Um, because you know, if there even is one sport in the entire world, motorsports uh, has the one, is the one that tends to throw up the surprises, shall we say? But uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the the percentage chance is in the single digits, single digits for Grimner. Yeah, but I've, again, I have to be fair, seen much crazier, crazier things happen in sim racing. So don't write them off yet. Uh, but the pit window will open in the next three minutes. Here, he's, I think up to the back of well, it's, it's his teammate Hasser here so I don't think it's going to be that much of a worry no he hasn't caught up actually uh, but yeah the first car here luckily is going to be Florian Hasser and also maybe needs to like ha get Lona to slow people down behind him as well make it easier to maybe catch up to E6 like that's the maximum they could really be hoping for here because it's in their hands as a car just disappears off the circuit there what happened there who was that well Alex Mosin just taking, a, yeah, that's that's the short version there. <laughs> um, but you took it the wrong time. He's kind of taken the long version and then thought, oh, no, I'm going to take the short version. And then realized, oh, well, no, it's too late now. Uh, and yeah, that's a bit, that's a that's, bit messy that's, there. That's, uh, that's but, F1 first year they did Paul Ricard vibes right there. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly right there. And well, to be fair, Mosin getting the sponsor of the event, Media Marked, uh, onto screen. It's always good, isn't it? Always good to get the sponsors on screen. It's what these motorsport drivers are very good at here. Isaac Price still holding firm then in P5, uh, doing a very, very good job here. Again, all of the jokes and stuff about him being old and all that, ladies and gentlemen. It is all a bit of fun. Nothing more, nothing less. I've had a couple of messages where people have genuinely said I'm picking on him. I'm not. I know Isaac. I have the utmost respect for him. He's a, one of the very best sim racers uh, that have been over the last 10 years. And there's not very many people you can say that about who have the longevity of that 10 years, hence the old man jokes. That is what it's about. It's nothing really to do with his age. He's still old, though. 
<laughs> oh yeah. As far as sim yeah, races are concerned, you know, even you know, because I've been in, you know, I've been doing sim racing commentary since. Oh no! Oh, Lona is just spun him round. Old man spin. Oh. There we go. Old man rejoin as well. Oh, ah, the second one. Yeah. Oh, and another oh, one. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like he's driving his rocket chair at this point. That is I not think idea. I think Price is trying to go for as many penalties uh, sustained within five seconds uh, <laughs> in that instance. Yeah, that is. Um, that was. Yeah, interesting, to say the very least. I'm, I'm going to throw that out there. That clip will not end up on his Instagram, <laughs> uh, nor his team's Instagram. So, yeah, I've, I've got nothing to be worried about that one now. Uh, Lona now, P7. So, gaston has got up ahead here. So, is Max Pfeiffer as well. Another double um, performance from him. It's been very, very good for the tailored uh, rig eSports outfit. Pliska now moves up to P8. Vermeil in P9. Attila Dinya is in P10. Keithley up to P11. Then we've got Florian Hasser and Krippner. So, Krippner's been helped here by gaining two spots by the looks of things. That was because of Mosin and indeed Isaac Price. So now it's really all in his own hands here. And I'm going to be honest with you, he's actually dropping further back from Florian Hasser. He must have damage as well, to be fair, considering the contact he had earlier on. Um, but yeah, he's just not really making any inroads in terms of his own pace. Uh, he's, two, he's dropped off two seconds from the lead. And then again, it's Kevin Singh in the lead, so that makes sense. But I'd be surprised if he doesn't bring this car in right now as soon as he possibly can, get that fresh rubber on and maybe fix some of the damage that he potentially has here. Does he swing it to the right? Yeah. No, so he's not making that decision here. Stay out as long as you can then is, is really the vibe I'm getting, but he needs help from his teammates to just slow the rest of the pack down. And even that isn't going to be enough here. Ottaviani's done the hard work early in this race. Hugveld P4, a teammate of RAG, if, if their esports do try and influence this race so that Kripner maybe gains a couple of spots. He's got Hugvelt to back him up, the RHG outfit again, in a very, very good spot uh, indeed. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Which is the, the best word I use to describe that. But uh, yeah, um, Gassner keeping ahead of Lohner at the moment. And uh, well, again, it's good to see those Taylor Rigg, Taylor Rigg esports cars continuing to fight the good fight. Um, but, you know, it's been over the past couple of rounds now that they've been able to score some pretty good points finishes. You got Max Pfeiffer a little bit further down the road in fifth as well. So uh, the Mercedes uh, doing uh, great things here. And well, uh, hopefully this is the sign of more to come from the Taylor Rigg esports team because it, it does seem over the past month or so that they've really, really come to the forefront. They must have worked something out with these cars uh, to be able to uh, get themselves towards the top of the order. Or potentially, they, they might have put in uh, the legwork, put in the hard work, and it'd start to pay off. Yeah, you'd like to think so. It's just a little bit too, too little, too late, yeah. isn't it? Uh, um, and you tend to find that, don't you? You, you tend to, to find that teams will find something at the end of the season and you think oh that puts them in good stead for the next season and then the car changes or something <laughs> changes it's kind of like why couldn't you i don't know some teams prepare a little bit better when it comes to the end of the season than they do at the start of the season and you genuinely see who prepares the most kevin siggy has put in a lot of time like that's just how he is he'll put in eight hours a day to, to try and win this like he'll he'll want this prize he's been in a real race car before you'll absolutely want to be in a real race car again and you know if i was to go based off of what i know about these drivers right now morris lona you've absolutely got to say that he would be a top candidate for a real drive because he is currently racing in that series but outside of that kevin siggy could he is young he's fit he's determined he's got experience in a real race car he's a born winner you know he will be incredible at any challenges thrown his way in terms of if they're going to be looking at re you know the normal challenges like reactions and and stuff like that for for a motorsport driver he will have that in abundance he'll be fine so yeah not only looking at this championship here looking past it and potentially being the overall winner of the prize i think kevin siggy's in a really good spot morris lone of course we know that he's already in the car he's already got himself some podiums um you know, in the DTM trophy, I can actually uh, get his uh, DTM trophy stat up for you uh, right now. So, Morris Loney had 14 starts last season. He got third twice. He got top five four times. And he got top ten uh, nine times out of 14 races. Super, super consistent. P8 in the championship, 82 points overall. Um, that's how much of a nerd I am, guys. I have my own spreadsheets that I put together. So, yeah, he's already got that accolade. He's already got that showing. He's already got that skill set. Uh, but if there's anyone outside of him that could really be in and amongst it, Kevin Siggy, 
I just think he's, he just needs that small chance. Once he gets that small chance, expect to see him take the world on. Yeah, potentially. Uh, of course, it's not a guarantee. Even as the winner of this DTM Esports Championship, it's not a guarantee he'll actually get the prize. Uh, it's going to be anyone in, inside of that top five. Of course, I, I would have to say it's probably unlikely Lona gets it, considering he, uh, <laughs> he already has a drive uh, for the DTM uh, trophy uh, for next season. So it might have to be in amongst the other four uh, about who uh, gets that. But, you know, if Siggy does get it, then Potentially. Well, no, this is this is not this season. This is for oh, next for season, next remember? Season. So, right, okay. Yeah, so this is for 2023. This is not for 2022. So right now, uh, Morris Lona is racing for 2022. But, you know, just to... It would be good for him to win this overall when it gets to the sighting event, just to guarantee himself a seat because motorsport is not as easy as, oh, he raced last season. Of course, he's going to be racing this season. The DTM Trophy Grid's only got four drivers from last season racing this season. So it is a case of if he could win the seat for next season and not have to worry about going out getting sponsors and, and, and worry about funding the season, like this is a dream come true for him as well. So yeah, it's not as cut and dry as, oh, it will be between the other four because Moritz is already there. He isn't, he's just got this season. Okay. There we go, that clears it up. Lone at Lone, he did come down in for a very early stop, and, well, he was the only one to come down in this early. So that's uh, that's a call there for Morris Lone, potentially to try and secure himself ahead of Gassner and try and get close to Pfeiffer and Hergfeld further down the road as well. Uh, but uh, if he's able to get up to Ottaviani, then that would be a benefit. Then he can start helping out Krippner a little bit, try and cause Ottaviani to lose a few positions. Another driver on towards pit lane. That is Pfeiffer and Gassner, so they're coming down in to cover off Lona. But i got to say, though, if uh, if Siggy and Lona both get themselves a season in the same season in the uh, DTM Esports Trophy, it would be fascinating to see their, their potential fight because it's two sim drivers, but flying it out in real cars. Yeah, that would be amazing. To be, fair, to be fair, we saw Will Tregertha and Ben Green do that very much last year. And in all fairness, every single racing driver is now a sim driver as well, yeah. to, for the most part. So, yeah, it would uh, be nice to see. I guess it's a lot of them have become sim racers. But after they've become a real race driver, this is kind of the opposite, isn't it? So, yeah, it would be amazing to see them two fight on the circuit there. Maybe the DTM Esports program produces a DTM trophy champion. How amazing would that be? How amazing would it be to see someone come from the DTM eSports background and move forward through DTM trophy? Well, we've already seen it from Tim Heineman. Tim Heineman, of course, one of the very best of all time when it comes to race room, specifically. He's gone into the DTM trophy, won the first season, an absolute canter, to be honest. Uh, was very unfortunate in terms of, just hasn't managed to, to get that drive in the, in the DTM championship overall. And I think that's the next step. I think that is the next step. As soon as a DTM trophy driver gets that drive in the DTM, I think we're just going to be looking uh, like at the whole ecosystem of DTM in a whole different way. As Ottaviani, by the way, is absolutely struggling with those rear tyres. 100% bringing the car in now, isn't he? Is he not? Like, has he got a puncture or some sort? Because they're now, what, well, 10.7 seconds off of Fiducci. There's a big problem here. Hoogveld has just decided, I don't think, not to make the overtake. If he doesn't bring the car in, I guess there's no issue. But yeah, for me, Ottaviani is very much struggling getting the power down on the exit. Uh, but yeah, back to the, um, to the topic in hand. We've got these five pillars in, in DTM. We've got DTM, DTM Trophy, DTM Classic, DTM Electric, and DTM Esports. And to see them all so closely knit together, of course, we've got so many champions from yesteryear racing in DTM Classics. Uh, we've got the DTM itself has got 29 different uh, cars this season, 29 different drivers, but I think it will work out to be about 34 because we've got drivers that can't make certain events. They've got drivers like Sebastian Loeb, for instance, coming in as a... Um, as a a reserve driver, which is mind-blowing. Sebastian Loeb, a reserve driver. Just let that sink in. He's going to be taken over from Nick Cassidy for the AF Corsa team. Um, but yeah, I think the, the, the next step really is to link it all together, would be having a DTM, like an eSports driver, make it from this to DTM trophy, succeed in DTM trophy, and then make it to DTM. Like that, what a story that would be. That would be amazing for me, personally. I think that would just be the tip of the iceberg and would show what progress DTM are trying to make in a grand scale. Of oh, look at this. Hoogveld just coming off of pit lane. He'll be on the cold tires, and this is potentially the opportunity that Lona needs to try and get by. He already got by Gastner based on the strategy. Uh, that was just due to time on pit lane, and now he swings through on Hoogveld, careful to keep it all together, coming off the exit of the corner. Sorry to interrupt, interrupt your monologue there, Luke, but Lona has played a blinder in terms of strategy here. He absolutely has, and that puts him up to a net fourth position. 
Siggy, Ottaviani and Fiducci then are all effectively now still ahead because we just saw uh, Hoogveld come into the pitch just in behind Ottaviani. And for me, Ottaviani has to follow suit, right? Where is Ottaviani? He should be coming up towards the end of the lap now. Well, there he is. He's into the pit. So he had to follow suit here. And he did not look quick on the exit of the final couple of corners through the previous lap. This is going to be interesting here. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. I Oh, look at this. Gart Gassner, that's a slowdown penalty all day of the week. Uh, Christopher Hoogveld there, cut into next week. I'm um, up the inside there of Gasner. I want to go on board here with uh, Ottaviani. I think that Lona is going to have got him here. I really do. So I think the outlap here would have been pretty quick from everybody on fresh tyres. I don't think Ottaviani was really that quick at all. I think he burnt his tyres out big time. So Morris Lona then is going to come around that final corner. This is the car just in behind. We are going to see him merge then. So let's get on board with Lona. There he is. Ottaviani's coming out here, so we will see this merge. And is it going to be Ottaviani in P3, or has Moritz Lona gone from P8 in this race down up towards P3? It is going to be close. Oh, it's not going to be as close as I thought, actually. I think Ottaviani may have... Yeah, he's got him pretty pretty easily here, uh, in all fairness. Got a little bit ex overexcited there. Maybe it's just one corner he made a mistake at, to be fair. And he wasn't ultimately that slow. So Moritz Lona, who's got the older tyres, they are already up to temperature. I think that's what, something that he will have an advantage on. As we've got Hookvel here diving up the inside of Gassner. Gets that job done. Sweeps around the outside. And I tell you what, Gassner just trying to hang on up the inside. They are still side by side. Yeah, the overlap is... Oh, no, it isn't anymore. Gassner, they're trying to get that slipstream. He's going to try and swing it around the outside. Hookvel is just losing so much time to the group in front if he wants a podium. Uh, it's not quite going to work out, although he cannot get that power down. Neither can the BMW. Both come out there very, very similarly uh, in this situation. Is there a potential dive here for Gassner? No, there isn't. Uh, if we go a little bit further up, Morris Lona is absolutely battling for that podium spot. Yeah, indeed he is. There he is, uh, out there. Uh, Ottaviani, of course, on marginally fresh tyres by two laps, I think it is, uh, and those will be starting to come up to temperature uh, at the end of this lap. So, yeah, it's still going to be a bit of a struggle for Lona, but ne never count out your, your previous DTM eSports champion here and, of course, driver in the DTM trophy um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, still potential for him to try and get past Artaviani here and just uh, have a, 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 you know, help Kripner out just that little bit more. Uh, Kripner, he did come down on towards the pit lane, by the way. Um, he's uh, up behind Hassa still, um, which, he, which is the driver he was behind even before um, coming down on towards the pit lane. So maybe a little bit of damage is affecting uh, Kripner's performance here, which is severely reducing his chances at scoring enough points to be able to even cause Artaviani a concern. Yeah, but he has caught up to Hassa. So Hassa was about three seconds ahead for the pit stop phase. But he has caught up here. So, yeah, he's in a relatively good position. Uh, Ottaviani has been gapped here by Pfeiffer. Yeah. Wow. So Max Pfeiffer is up to P3, net P3. So on for a podium here in that AMG. Wow. Okay. Well, he did an overcut, didn't he? Came in a little bit. Um, yeah, he came in a lap later. Max Pfeiffer has just produced a miracle pit stop. And he put himself, wow. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. He was only P5, I think. So he was behind the two R8G cars and he wasn't really putting any pressure on. He wasn't like right behind them when they all pit. And ultimately, here we go. Wow. Yeah. And does this start to concern a little bit the drivers further down the road? I don't think so. They had a, a pretty decent gap. There is uh, Gianmarco Fiducci coming down in. That's for the team Fordzilla Ferrari. And uh, well, let's see where he comes out in relation to uh, Max Pfeiffer. There's Kevin Siggy. He still remains out there. Um, yeah, another lap, and of course, he has a, a decent time buffer to those cars behind, so he can afford to stick it out there just for a couple of extra laps, just to make sure he has the best tyres for the very end of the race. Uh, Max Pfeiffer yeah, continuing to cap off Tiani as well. Well, no, yeah, so he's ahead of Otto Viani. He's not going to be catching up to um, yeah, he's not going to be catching up to Fiducci here. So Fiducci should come out absolutely clean ahead here, unless he had loads of damage to fix or anything like that. I think he's going to be all good. There is Fiducci then coming out of the pits. Good day for him, guaranteeing himself that top five. Team Fordzilla driver will be at the sighting event later on in the year. There is Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's on for that podium. He's going to be chased down by Ottaviani, 100%. It's not going to be uh, a very easy podium here from here on out. He's still got over half the race to go. 32 minutes on the clock here, but I tell you what, it'll be a very popular podium to say the very least. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, it will be. And, well, currently, your podium sitters are not yet to come down towards the pit lane. At least the, uh, um, the the current podium sitters here with the pit stop still yet to be in fact for these guys. So Siggy um, yet to come down in, Vermeulen, and, of course, Isaac 
Price yet to make their pit stops here in this event. And while Siggy, he remains out there at least one more as well. So continuing to log laps on those tires that he's had on since the very start of the event. And well, this is more of a, uh, well, relatively conservative strategy for him. He's just eating into the time a little bit that he was able to get over the rest of the field through the first stint. And that will now pay him dividends for the very end as he will have both the combination of the gap and the fresher tyres to be able to run away even further. Further down the order, well, closest battle on circuit, Luke, is uh, Pliska versus Atelier Dinya. This is for currently uh, P10 out there on circuit. Absolutely. And again, there's two young drivers out there that are making their way in the eSports world. And I would say that's quite common on race room now. It's a couple of the, the older sta elder statesmen, if you like to say, but the most part these are all very young drivers been around for two or three years at the very top level and they're only going to get better and better and better so excited to see the future for these drivers just look at the picture how young they are uh, p11 dinia seems like he's been around forever uh, but look just still battling for that top 10 we know if he gets a run here on pisca probably best not to try and take the inside return number one yeah, um, sticking behind, uh, just uh, going to be the name of the game here. There is the swap, though, between Hassa and Krippner. That was uh, just as obvious as the swap between Hergfeld and Ottaviani that we had at the uh, at the very start of this race. So uh, Krippner has been let through up into P13. So, you know, every little helps when it comes to points here in this championship, and especially in Krippner's situation where he needs to reduce the gap all the way to Ottaviani. However, 30 minutes left in this race. Got to keep yourself in it. You've got to be in it to win it in championships such as this, even though P1 has completely uh, gone away uh, in terms of championship to uh, Kevin Siggy. Siggy, he can DNF on this race and, and he'll still be uh, the championship winner at the end of today. Uh, but of course, the main feature that we've been talking about over the course of this final race is who's going to be finishing in that final qualification spot into the DTM Trophy Boot Camp, uh, where one of those drivers will get themselves a chance to uh, drive a DTM Trophy car in a full season, which is an absolutely fantastic experience for whoever is going to be able to get that. Axel Vermeulen, he's come down on towards the pit lane, so that means we've got two drivers yet to make their final pit stop in this race. That's Kevin Segi and uh, Isaac Price. Both of those have not yet come down in. In terms of DNFs, well, we've had uh, Ralph Pringer. He's uh, unfortunately not going to take any further part in this race. We have uh, uh, Luciano Vitvotes and uh, Pinches, and of course, Jonas Vanna uh, also have decided that uh, this race is not going to end with them in it. Uh, so that's sort of a little bit of an update with regards to the circumstances out there on circuit with just under halfway to go here, Luke. So we're still waiting for Siggy and uh, Price to come down in. But once that's, uh, once that's done, well, it's going to be a straight up uh, fight to the end. Potentially in and amongst this uh, little grouping between uh, Pfeiffer, Ottaviani, Lona. Those are the sort of close drivers out there right now. Yeah, 100%. And when it's all said and done, I think they're going to be battling for a potential podium. Uh, if they can stick with Fife, and Fife are looking pretty quick here. Um, we've got here Sveteslav Pashkov saying, is VER Verstappen? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's the Belgian version. I, you know the answer to that question. Come on. Uh, Siggy still leading. And I think he's going, I, I thought if he'd come in at 30 minutes, he's just, just going to split the strategy. I think he wants to lead every single lap. So he's going to wait for everybody to pit behind him, which they have now. Isaac Price, who loves to stay out late and get a couple of lead laps. So I think he realizes that Siggy is just going to stay out longer. Um, Siggy wants to do the whole, I've led every single lap of this race. Uh, move on. Uh, he will bring the car in next time round. I would very much doubt he goes any later than that because everybody's pit now. Uh, and he will lead every single lap here. It will be in style. DTM Esports Champion 2022. Is there anything more stylish than leading every single lap? Yeah, I'm not sure there is. Fiducci, by the way, moves up to P2. Price is going to drop behind Pfeiffer as well. Uh, Otto Viani as well. Uh, and then Lona, who, well, we've already seen Price and Lona have a little bit of coming together. Hugvelt comes through. Gasser comes through. Pliska comes through. So does Tiladinia. Heathley is going to come through his twin brother. Kripnat and Hassa are in P11 and 12th. Then we've got Verstappen, <laughs> all for Malin. <laughs> Uh, in P13 uh, and Rashall I don't think he's quite going to get him here so P14 then for Isaac Price fresh rubber on the car what can 
kind of magically produced now out of that magic hat. Siggy is the leader. Is he going to come in this lap? Uh, yep. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Absolutely called it. He wants to lead every single lap. He's Everyone's now coming behind him, so he knows he's got about a 50-second advantage. And he will bring that car in. And he was, uh, what, sorry, he was four seconds clear of Fiducci. So whether Fiducci, unless Fiducci's done the most ridiculous lap times of all time, uh, Siggy will be in the lead. Well, it was a second gain on that last lap, or rather nine tenths of a second game on, gain on the last lap for Fiducci. So eating into that time every single lap that Siggy decided to stay out there. Uh, so we'll see how close it is once uh, Siggy comes off for the pit lane, rejoins the circuit, and that will mean that everyone has completed their pit stops and, uh, well, the orders are exactly as you see them on the left-hand side. We don't have to try and play some mathematics and uh, try and add the pit stop times to everyone's current time and things like that. So uh, it will be a representative position for everyone. Uh, but yeah, where does Siggy come out in relation to everyone? He's got his tyres done, he's down off the jacks and, well, coming back out onto circuit now. There is Gianmarco Fiducci. It's going to be close. There is Kevin Siggy. Close, but four seconds close. Yes. By the time it works itself out, it will be about four seconds, you're right. So it's not as close as I thought it would be. Uh, Fiducci, who absolutely was incredible during race number one and looked like he might be able to make a run for, for the lead with Siggy. Never really quite materialized, unfortunately. With 25 minutes to go, Siggy leads the way. Pfeiffer leads this group for P3. So let's uh, keep an eye on this for a little bit. Bandit comes out with a Ric Flair. Woo! As well. Yes, we love to see it. It's worth it. Rick Flair will, I think, to the ETM Esports for sure. I know Rick Flair will be absolutely loving this when he's watching this later on. I'm sure he can't watch it now because it's too early for him in America. But he'll for sure watch the replay of the ETM Esports 2022. Max Pfeiffer then, again, driver of the day for me last week. I don't think we could give it to him this week. I think Kevin Siggy absolutely deserves that, uh, coming our champion. So if Morris Lona not able to become the two-time. It is indeed going to be one apiece for him and Siggy over the course of the last three years. Max Pfeiffer performed exceptionally well last time out for the tailored rig esports who haven't really had the, the craziest of championships, unfortunately, for them. They would have expected a little bit more, I'm sure. Uh, but Max Pfeiffer proving that, you know, the future in this esports team is in very good hands with him and he is just getting better and better with every single race. Yes, podium spots for the final race of the season, at least currently, and... Well, unless Ottaviani or Morris Lona have anything to say about that. But I think if you're Ottaviani at this point, you know, due to the um, the drama that uh, Krippner had and, you know, how many positions Krippner is behind at the moment, I don't think Ottaviani really wants to push the issue too much uh, unless he wants to risk himself getting him involved in an incident that then turns the tables once again in terms of the top five in the championship. So I, I think you know, the, the goal here for Ottaviani should just be Okay, uh, you know, I'm in my qualification spot right now. I don't need to push the issue too much. I'm just going to sit behind, even potentially, um, you know, be a bit nicer to Lona. But then again, do a sports car. You know, yeah, that could that could uh, turn around and, and bite him in the butt a little bit. Yeah, 100%. It, it really could. So it's a case you don't really want to give Lona a sniff to hit because Lona, you know, could potentially get ahead and then slow him down. Krippen is only eight seconds behind with what, how many laps we've got left here? Maybe 12, 13? Lona could get ahead and slow him down by a second a lap. It becomes very, very interesting then, doesn't it? So you, you expect there's going to be still a twist or a turn during this, that's for sure. Um, and actually, do you know what? I'm going to go through the list here of drivers and just kind of just sort of judge their season, if you like. Kevin Siggy, I think you've got to give a 10 out of 10, right? Fiducci, you're looking at, a, you know, 9 out of 10. He's, he's done what he needed to do. I'm not sure he was quite ever really in the hunt to win the championship. Max Fife has come really good for the end of this season. You, you know, looking at him, maybe a 7 out of 10, but bags of potential. Uh, Ottaviani, I think the objective would have been the top five from the, from the get-go. And we go Morris Lona probably not done what he wanted to do. He came in this expecting to win the championship, never really quite materialized. Uckveld, he probably would have expected a bit more from himself this season. It's been, it's been one of those where it's just no one has been anywhere near Kevin Siggy. And I know we, we probably say that quite a lot, don't we? Because he is that much of a talented driver. But there's just a little bit more for everybody else to do. Yeah, that, that you know has felt the case for every single race uh, pretty much uh, over this season. Of course, you know, there's been blips here and there for Siggy, but uh, by and large, um, it's been a, a relatively perfect season. And uh, you don't often get to say that uh, for, for really any driver in any sports season. Uh, they, they tend to be a little bit closer uh, than this one is, uh, at least for the top position. 
Uh, but you know, you certainly can't complain if you're red line or if you're if you're seeing at the moment with the way things have gone. There's a good stack up back here through the pack though, just returning you know back to more of the racing talk. Uh, Jack Heathley, uh, Atelier Dinia, Kripner, Hassa, Vermeulen, all within the same postcode here for the P9 through 13. So potentially we might see some action here in the final 20 minutes. Yeah, Kripner has to. He has to make the, these overtakes, otherwise it is game over. He's got to be hoping that Ottaviani receives a, a quite a, a big penalty. Like, for instance, if, if Ottaviani was to get a 10-second penalty, let's say he got two five-second penalties, right, for today, it would put him all the way down to P13. So he would be two spots behind Kripner. Kripner would actually then be our champion. Uh, well, not champion, sorry. He would then be the driver that gets the top five. So, yeah, it wouldn't be, have to be a huge penalty now for Kripner to still be able to go through so it's, it's yeah we won't find that out they've got 24 hours to post any potential uh incidents to our stewards so we won't find that officially out or anything like that i'm sure uh, it'll be posted out on the dtm uh, social media tomorrow or the next day depending on when it's officially done we know who our champion is going to be it really is only going to be contended about the p5 uh, p6 spots uh, really as to whether we see them at the loudest ring 20 minutes to go here Siggy's still leading six seconds clear of fiducci absolutely gapping uh, fiducci now by the looks of things five for 13.8 seconds behind the leader as we see Leonard Krippner then trying to make a run here on that AMG and as we run then down in towards turn number one yeah it's close but Keith Lee is just not giving you any an inch of room there being around far too long to let an overtake happen that easily that's for sure he holds on to that spot and yeah he's doing a sensational job considering that AMG just has not been at the race this season and I think that's one thing that we saw from the first DTM esports season where it was Keith Lee versus Lona wasn't it for the whole season the three cars, that, well, was it two actually, sorry, it's BMW versus Mercedes, if I'm right. Is it BMW versus Mercedes? Yeah, so. I guess it, it was. Um, it, the cars were just so similar. There was not really that big of a difference between them. Uh, it's just the chassis looked a little bit different, to be fair. It's a bit more of a spec series, albeit not a spec series, if that makes any sense. With this, I just don't, I, I don't think the balance of performance has been great this season, to be fair. I think it really is only given the opportunity for the Ferraris and the BMW. So anybody who, anybody who picked the car outside of that, I just don't think had a chance, full stop, to be honest with you. So there's a lot of drivers that are on this grid right now that absolutely will feel like they've chosen the wrong car this season. And when it comes to another season in DTM Esports, they would be able to challenge someone like Siggy. So yeah, I think the future of DTM Esports has is, is, got massive potential. I think it needs to be technically a little, a little bit better um, for it to really grow into its potential. But yeah, there's a lot of drivers here that are so, so super quick. We have a mistake there, by the way, from Attila Dinya, run a little bit wide. Kripner, he's running out of time here, 18 minutes, 51 seconds. He needs to get a real hurry up here. And actually, the gap now is nine seconds between Ottaviani and Kripner. So Ottaviani will probably be looking to at least have a 10 second gap by the end of this race. As we come down into turn number one, once again, Kripner versus Heathley. Heathley is still just about going to have that nose ahead, but Kripner sweeps around the outside. And I think by the time they get through the kink of turn two and into turn three, has the car fully up inside, oh, up, up ahead. And as you can see there, Keithley sends one up the inside, not quite going to work out. Up the hill they come, BMW power prevails. And it's a move then for Kripner, but he's going to have lost a lot of time. He's got three cars up ahead of him. He absolutely now has to make a potential move. Four tenths between Lona and indeed Ottaviani. So right now, Kripner needs a bit of a favor here from Lona. He needs Lona to make an overtake and then slow him up. I mean, in the process of making the overtake, he can slow him up as well. So yeah, you know, Lawrence Lona needs to turn up the heat here up against Ottaviani, even if he doesn't successfully get past, if he just made, you know tries to get an overlap down into these corners, puts Ottaviani offline, both of them will be losing a bit of time, but you know that doesn't really matter uh, because Lona, well, he can't win the championship, you know, mathematically impossible. City already has that on lockdown. So uh, why not try to help out Kripner, try to slow down Ottaviani, try and put him in a bad spot, try and force a mistake potentially from Ottaviani. You know, it doesn't need to be a, a little bump to the rear, to bump to the rear and then send the driver off, which will be a, a very heavily penalizable offense. But if you do put your car into a position where you're having, you're causing Ottaviani to panic potentially, you might be able to make him have his own incident comes down to who would you prefer to have a beer with <laughs> at the end of the day? Your teammate or someone who's not your teammate? 
So Lona has an opportunity here to potentially slow down Ottaviani enough for Krippner to maybe catch up. He has to make about 20 overtakes, but it is still a possibility with, what, 17 minutes to go. And it, at the Lousis ring, enjoy, although he will be racing in the DTM Trophy, so I guess he won't be able to have any beers. Uh, that's, a, a, that's the commentators only, I think. Um, so just just uh, basically talking through my weekend. He's a driver. <laughs> he actually has to act professional in the evening, so it is what it is. Florian Hasser then, uh, well, now trying to follow suit here with his teammate Krippner, and now under pressure here from Axel Verstappen. So Verstappen, again, it's not Verstappen, guys. It's for Malin in P13, trying to make some moves here. Otto Viani is well, under a significant amount of pressure. Moritz Lona is as close as he's been all race long. As we come up there towards his right hand, and he just seems like he cannot get that rear to to really do what he wants, or, or maybe that's kind of what he wants the car to do. It's like a happy dog right now, wagging its tail around, like it's been given a new ball or something like that. Uh, but Morris Lona here, oh no, that's a mistake. That's a big mistake. He's done. He's absolutely done here. There's going to be a, a little bit of, of edging out of the circuit there, but Morris Lona has absolutely mugged Ottaviani off there. Ottaviani runs out wide. It only takes one mistake here. And wow, does Morris Lona play the team game here? Does he slow him down significantly enough to give Krippner a chance of maybe getting this done on track? Well, that changes things somewhat, doesn't it? 15 minutes to go. Now Moritz Lohner ahead. What can he do to uh, try and slow the pace of Ottaviani? Although Ottaviani, to be completely honest, he's been slowing his own pace at the moment with the amount of problems that he's been having over the last couple of laps. So Ottaviani, task is to get back ahead of Lohner here, not to lose too much time in doing so either. A little look to the inside through turn one, but can't uh, commit to anything down into there that would be a bit too overzealous because the uh, Ottaviani can't afford to have an instant here although he is going to try around the outside at turn three up the hill now through turn four they're fighting once again here Luke <laughs> Lona still ahead yeah he absolutely is still ahead but the gap now is well it's down to Oh, seven oh. seconds. As you see, a late lunge here from Ottaviani. And Lona would not be too worried about being spun out here either. He would not be worried about Ottaviani receiving a penalty for any kind of contact as well. So this is the team game being played out here. Krippner is going to look to try and get this done on track. And he needs Moritz Lona to help him out. Moritz Lona is going to be in a position right now where he's completely gutted that his championship's gone. He was a DTM Esports champion for the first season we had, and he wanted to become a two-time. He's got the number one on his car. It's not worked out here. Kevin Siggy is absolutely the leader of this, uh, or the winner of this second season in 2022. And now Moritz Lona has got to get rid of that and now slow down Otto Biani significantly enough for his teammate to potentially take full advantage. They've been side by side throughout this whole lap here. Lona knows exactly what he's doing right now. He is going to lose out here to Ottaviani. And now Ottaviani has his teammate behind of Hugvelt. Hugvelt needs to get ahead of Lona and basically do exactly the same. So he needs his teammate to slow down Moritz Lona so that he can't go out there and do it once again. Gap between Krippner and now Ottaviani is only five seconds. So he's come down now by three seconds already. 13 minutes, 40 seconds to go. The battle for P5 is between Ottaviani and Krippner. Oh boy, there is still some twists and turns to come. As we see a potential second move here for the position. And there's a mistake there from Ottaviani. Morris Lona gets it again. Oh, Connery, uh -oh. we're in for a grandstand finish here. We really yeah, are. Yeah, there's the group behind them as well. The group that consists of Gastner, Pliska, and most crucially, Krippner. So, uh, you know, you know, if we get one of these nose on shots down the straights here, there we go. There's the pack behind them that's uh, starting to track them down now. This is going to get pretty sketchy here in the final 13 minutes because Lona's doing everything he can to be a good teammate uh, for Leonard Krippner. The saving grace for Ottaviani, though, is that RAD Esports car further behind. Hergfeld is a bit of a buffer zone. So Hergfeld, once that train catches up to these guys, Hergfeld can do the same as what Boris Lona is doing as Ottaviani finds the overlap coming off the corner. Another instance of side by side through this section for the second lap in a row. Ottaviani to the inside through this winding right-hander. Still can't <laughs> quite get ahead. They're still at it. Yeah, and Hookvelt here is kind of in a, in a oh! double-edged sword for him here. Oh, Ottaviani runs out wide and just slides the car across the white line. But yeah, Hookvelt can't really overtake Ottaviani because ultimately then he's in, in huge trouble himself because he gives up a spot to his teammate. And, and again, Moritz Lone is just going to slow them both down. But the gap now is, well, it's 20, it's three seconds. So it's come down from 10 <laughs> to three seconds. This is a Sergio Perez 
um, act from last year in Formula One. I can't remember what track it was. That was it Singapore? Might be Singapore. Um, no, it wasn't Singapore, was it? I can't remember. But it, it, anyway, Perez held up. Um, no, it was the last se race yeah, season. Derby, Derby yeah. held up Hamilton significantly enough for Verstappen to be right up his fart box uh, by the end <laughs> of the race. Is that close once again here? Morris Lona is playing the Sergio Perez role here perfectly well. He's got the two RHG cars in behind, and now. You know, as much as he's doing all this hard work, he needs Kripner to do the job himself here, by the way. So Kripner has to go out there and overtake Fiska, and he has to overtake Gashner, and he has to overtake Hoogvelt. And if you're Hoogvelt right now, I think you make the decision to drop back here. Let Ottaviani attack Lona, but you drop back and you stop that, you stop Kripner from being able to even catch up to Ottaviani. It's, this is a game of cat and mouse right now. It's like a game of chess, but this is DTM Esports. This is gonna come down to the wire. And it really is Moritz Lona. Who, want, who do you want to spend a, a, your time with and have a beer with? A teammate or not a teammate? It's as simple as that. He's choosing a teammate at this stage. Yeah, I mean, I've had the luxury of meeting uh, Moritz in person. Uh, last time I was out there, oh, big defensive move to the inside there. My word, there was no way through uh, for Ottaviani. He tries to get the traction off the corner. You can see Lona slowing him up through these corners. Hergfeld, well, he's just playing rear gunner at the moment. Well, Kri Kri Kripner's got Kripner's got Dinya. Kripner's made the move, so he's up to P9. So he's already got one position here. He needs to get these two. Moritz Lona slowing them down all crazily uh, here. Uh, it, basically, if Kripner could get ahead of Ottaviani, it would still be, what was his gap coming into this? Three points? Yep. So he needs to gain three points on Ottaviani here. Uh, and effectively, Moritz Lona could be the, could, uh, be the buffer that gets him through. I don't know what's going to go down <laughs> right now. But again, he's still got the hard job here of getting past Piska. Piska's not going to make it easy for sure. Neither is Gassner. Uh, that is a fact as well. As we come down into a turn one once again, Lona takes that inside line. Ottaviani, though, with the switch back here, will have that inside line for turn number two. And this could be perfect for RHG. Oh, there's contact between Hookfeld and indeed Moritz Lona. I think that Hookfeld's gone a little bit too deep there, realistically. Uh, and tried to make something happen that was never really on. Uh, Lona, did he close the door a little bit late? Yes, absolutely did as well. Is it going to matter for him? No, penalties aren't going to matter for him at all. He's going to finish second in this championship. He doesn't care there. But the big factor is that now they do not have the rear gunner, RAG. They do not have Hoogvelt in the mix here. But Ottaviani did get the position. So now it's still in his hands here in P4. Run away, Ottaviani. Run away. He has to, but remember... We've still got pending investigations. We got that uh, whole lap one situation uh, that with the Ottaviani's dive down the inside, making it three wide. Uh, we, we think he should be in the clear. He got the car stopped for the apex of the corner. There was an accusation that he pushed Hassa wide out into Kripner that caused the whole, uh, the whole situation with Kripner going on right now, where he's on the back foot trying to make up these positions. Uh, so Lona's done enough to potentially get uh, you know, Kripner within that uh, sort of three second penalty gap uh, to cause Ottaviani a, a big, big issue should a penalty apply. I don't think it will, I have to reiterate. But yeah, there's a lot of factors coming into this one. It's not just going to be the result out there on circuit, the order they come across the line. It potentially might be yet another steward's room inquiry that decides a championship for the uh, second time in a row here in Race Room. Well, luckily, it won't be for the championship. Oh, yeah. So Siggy, Lona, they're good. But yeah, for P5, the final point of like prize paying position. Yeah, absolutely. It's on the line here, isn't it? Uh, the one thing that I think Ottaviani has got in his favor here is that Petr Piska is Italian. Uh, so <laughs> the, yeah, there might be a, a case that they will help each other out here. Um, just because of that, I, I'm not sure whether it, it will come down to nationalities. Right now, the last thing really that Pisco wants to do is, is go and, well, no, I guess he does want to go battle with Gassner. This is what Kripner needs. He needs them to battle. He also needs another favor from Lona to get ahead here. Every single lap that Ottaviani stays ahead is another lap where he cannot be slowed down. Uh, so Ottaviani, under the most uh, severe amount of pressure possible by being slowed down for three laps, still managed to get up into the lead here he's not cracked he's done a sensational job to be honest to be still into p4 or up to p4 again like that cannot be understated here but this has been a genuine game of motorsport chess it has been it's been an absolute joy to watch and we've still got seven minutes of it to go uh so yeah it's not over until it's over that's for sure uh, Kripner, there he is, still yet to try and find a way through on Piska. And of course, he has the, the bigger issue of, potential bigger issue. Moritz is close. Yeah, Moritz uh, is getting 
just that little bit closer once again. Ottaviani was able to gap him on that previous lap slightly, but uh, Lona still in contention here, still can be a big factor in this one. And of course, remember, coming towards the end of the stint now, how are the tyres going to hold up? Yeah, it is a case of, of about that as well. We know the Ferraris are going to be relatively good. They're just strong in every category around this circuit we found out so far today. And yeah, it has on the braking closed in, but it's going to run far too wide there. Again, not really in control of the car. Ottaviani is going through. to extend out ever so slightly once again. Kripner is absolutely, well, he's made the move here. And I, that looked far too easy, if I'm honest there. Although we have seen the AMG struggle in terms of pace against the BMW. But he had the stick dream of a BMW to work with there. That almost looked like Kripner has been let through there. So another favorite effort, Kripner. Kripner now needs to yeah, make easy work of Gassner and then potentially close up to the Lona versus Ottaviani battle and maybe take things into his own hands. He's running out of time here. Six minutes to go. You can see that the battle is indeed happening here between Attila Dinya and Kripner. Kripner has lost, oh, sorry. Tiller Dinya and Pliska. Pliska's lost another position there from Dinya. Uh, we see another car off the circuit in the background there. I think that might have been Hoogveld or Keithley, maybe Keithley. Uh, as we see Isaac Price then into the pit. So he's done. Gasner still in behind, uh, well, Moritz Lohner. He's got Kripner in behind him. Is there going to be the case of the Germans looking out for each other now? Is this <laughs> going to happen for Kripner? Is Kripner going to be gifted another spot here? He still needs Lona to get ahead of Ottaviani. There's 5 minutes 30 seconds left here, but there is the possibility for there to be about seven different race outcomes within that five minutes. Yeah, the tension is uh, certainly building up to its peak here in the final moments, not only of this final race of the season, but the season in general, of course, as well. Kripner looking to get the good run through the final corner to try and hog that slipstream all the way down the pit straight to be able to oh, make a, a move on Grasta. This might be it. Oh, what a run that is. Down towards turn one we go. Gasner's not made that difficult. He has not made that difficult. Kripner's been given a freebie again. And yeah, the Dura Esports team have got a massive opportunity here. Moritz Lona is as close to Ottaviani as he has been, well, the last time he made an overtake here. So he is absolutely waiting for his opportunity. Is it a case that he sends it down in towards the hairpin in hopes that he hits the apex? He is not close enough. We are going to have maybe three laps remaining at the end of this one. And for me, he needs to be, well, I guess it could be a matter of corners. Uh, he needs to be ahead of Ottaviani if he can slow him down significantly enough. But I think he's going to need a good couple of laps here. Ottaviani has it in his own hands, though. That is the big factor here. That Ferrari driver has it in his own hands. If he makes another mistake here, then, of course, Moritz Lohn is going to take full advantage of that. He's going to slow him down into Kripner. But if he doesn't, he just has the position. It will go to the steward's office. We've had too many incidents between Kripner and Ottaviani today. But all Ottaviani can do is just hold this position. Make sure that you are at least ahead of Kripner. Because you know, oh, it's a proper late lunch here. So Ottaviani makes the mistake again. I still think that there was contact there that was initiated by Moritz as well. So I don't think Moritz there was absolutely, uh, you know, not at complete fault there. But I still think that Ottaviani is just struggling with the rear of the car. They are going to be side by side here. And this changes the outcome once again. Ottaviani swing it around the outside. It will be a drag race down in towards turn number one. But Connery, if Moritz learn against the lead here, Kripner will be given an opportunity to overtake on track he and get ahead of Ottaviani. He needs to get two positions here, so you know that Moritz is probably going to let him go through as well. There is drama here in the DTM Esports 2022 finale. Huge drama, and oh, they're still at it side by side through the first sector. Later on the brakes goes Ottaviani. Lona has to let it go as Ottaviani gets himself back ahead. This is not done, though. Look at how close that Lona's pushing him basically physically pushing him through the corner. Uh, the Kripner's only half a second behind now. Here's another potential lunge. Oh, they're all over the place on the brakes into the left-hander. This is crazy stuff. Back end out for Moritz Lona. Remember, though, this is still all in the hands of Ottaviani. Even Kripner does get past him. They'd be tied on points. However, on the count back, Ottaviani will get it with one more second place than Kripner. Oh, this is the epitome of the esports right now. They are just... They've been working so well as a team this season. I don't have any favorites in sim racing, but I really hope Ottaviani holds this position. I think he thoroughly deserves it. He has had everything thrown at him this race so far. It's this right hander here that he just really struggles with. I genuinely hope he hangs on to this there. They are 32 seconds behind Ziggy. As we see a potential late lunch once again then between the Ferrari and indeed the BMW. Where's Ziggy on track right now? 
uh, exactly. Is Siggy, he's definitely crossed the line, right? So I think we are going to have, well, two laps. There's going to be two laps remaining of this race then. Back on board then with the battle for what is P4. But this is for the top five in the championship. Leonard Krippa is three points behind coming into this race of Ottaviani. So he needs to finish ahead and he needs to hope that Moritz also finishes ahead here of Ottaviani. And that means that Leonard Krippner would finish in the top five. They head down towards turn number one here. Moritz Lohner then is that second car of this train and then the third car is Krippner and well at this stage it's kind of it's not enough for Krippner just to overtake Ottaviani he needs to go, let Moritz go and then also be ahead of both of them it's a mind-blowing scenario to be in as Ottaviani runs wide here that potentially could be a slowdown penalty here Connery as it comes down towards the hairpin he is just about hanging on and it's by absolutely nothing it's crazy, and you can see how defensive he's, he's going into these breaking zones. He's always sort of leaning towards that inside to try and uh, close the gap. But any potential gap that Moritz Lona might be able to find his way down and in of. But now we have a look at uh, Kevin Siggy. He's coming towards the end of the lap here. We're going to be starting our final lap in just a couple of moments time. Ottaviani, oh, was that mistake from Lona? Ottaviani's now got a, a half a second compared to those two dirty sports cars behind. That is a huge help on this final lap. There's the confirmation. Siggy, he's been fantastic all day. He's been fantastic all season. He's already the champion. But who's going to get that final DTM trophy boot camp spot? Yeah, 100%. Again, great stuff from Kevin Siggy. You can't fault his performance here, but it just, he's been so dominant this season that this final race just isn't about him. As Ottaviani makes yet another mistake, the rears of that car, and actually it might be the fronts as well here because he just wasn't able to get the nose tucked in at all. It, it just really is struggling, and you see all of the cars behind now catching up. Ottaviani is in some severe oh, no. trouble. Oh, wow, he's off into Narnia. He's into a different country now. I think he might have just touched the border of Spain as we now run down towards turn one once again. Did he have to indeed endure a slowdown penalty? You can see the two Dur Esports cars here. Morris Lerner will go side by side. This is going to slow him down significantly enough here for Krippner to maybe make a lunge here. And if Ottaviani is to indeed be in the top five of the championship, he has to finish ahead of both of these drivers here. He cannot afford to lose one position. If he loses out to Morris Lerner, Lerner is going to slow him down enough for Krippner to overtake both of them. You can bet your bottom dollar as they come then down in towards the hairpin here. Morris Lerner trying to find a gap up the inside. There is contact between the two of them. But Ottaviani is going to have that outside line. He will be ushered out wide. The room is left, actually, to be fair. Ottaviani, with all the pressure in the world, is still hanging on. Krippner is up then into the position here to try and attack Ottaviani, but it will not be enough. He needs to hope his teammate gets through as well. Through the right hand, up the hill we come. We're coming up towards the highest point of the circuit here. Kevin Siggy's going to win this race. Benucci's going to finish in second spot. It will be Max Pfeiffer in third position. A podium then for the young German in third spot. But it's all about Ottaviani. It's all about Krippner. It's all about Moritz Lohner. This is the worst corner on the track for Ottaviani so far. Historically during this race of struggle, he's negotiated it there for the final time. Through the left-hander we go. And it is merely two right-handers for him to hold on to this position. If he holds on, he has the net point worth to go through. There may be some stewards inquiries, but he's done everything he needs to do. Morris Lona is round the wrong way. So even if Krippner gets ahead of him, it's not going to be enough. Ottaviani has had everything thrown at him today, including the full works from the Dur Esports team. But the Italian for RHG Esports will hang on. He will be P4 and he will be in the top five in the championship pending some stewards inquiries. That is an outstanding drive from the Italian. I was on my feet for that final lap, my word. That was crazy, crazy stuff. Ottaviani, well, he's done it on circuit. All that he needs to do, we just need the confirmation from the stewards as well. Of course, there might be appeals after this one as well, so it might be a day or so before we get everything sorted out, but my word, that was crazy. That was one of the most intense final couple of laps that we've ever had in the DTM Esports uh, season. Um, for, for any year that we've done this, Kevin Siggy takes the race win. And of course, it's been a perfect day for the team Redline driver and a perfect season for him. He, he is your DTM Esports 2022 champion. But wow, that was a great display going on behind of some great racing. Yes, it was intense. Yes, there were some bumps and there were some pushes here and there. But that was entertaining. 
Yeah, a lot of drivers played their part in that. Christopher Hoogveld played his, a massive part in that earlier on in this race where he really did. He gave Ottaviani the opportunity. He, let, he said, look, you go ahead of me. You go and see what you can do. If he doesn't do that, Ottaviani's not in a position he is to defend that position at the end. He's not even, he'll be behind Lona. So it would have made it so much more difficult uh, at an earlier stage of that race. So yeah, the RHG outfit have played their part there. Uh, I think, the most impressive driver, as much as Ottaviani was under some severe pressure. And it's very, you know, he is driver of the day for me. Max Pfeiffer, what a performance there for the AMG. The Mercedes has looked so slow at Portimao specifically, and he's dragged that car to a podium. The guy has been on tip-top form at the Red Bull ring and indeed Portimao. Incredible stuff from him. But Kevin Siggy is your DTM Esports 2022 champion. Oh, we are going to get the official point standings for you at home. I'm sweating. This pink shirt's going to go into <laughs> retirement it's, it, for a, a good couple of weeks. It's going to need to be dry cleaned. The works because that was so, so super exciting. We're going to head to a very short commercial break. Then we'll have the points for you and we can tell you exactly how it stands pending some stewards inquiries. Oh boy, what an event we've had. Auto Hero ist dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. <lacht> Well, here you have it then, ladies and gentlemen. Cars, here is your official standings as well as it stands. It's as simple as that, though, really. I'm running out of words and gas and all sorts. Kevin Siggy is officially the champion of the DTM Esports Championship 2022. Uh, a full 100 points clear of Moritz Lona. And do you know what? 
that doesn't lie. He absolutely deserves that kind of gap. He has been so, so strong. Morris Lona, he finishes in second spot then with 366. He got the consolidation of the fact that he will be driving the DTM trophy this season anyway. Uh, but he just wasn't able to go two for two. Still P2, though. And in two seasons of DTM Esports, he has finished, well, first and second. Not a bad re uh, record to have. Gianmarco uh, Feducci then finishes there with 293 points in third. And Alessandro Ottaviani has actually jumped ahead of Florian Hasser then, with Hasser not having the greatest race. And all of a sudden, it was actually between Hasser and Krippner then for that final position. I didn't see that coming. Uh, so Ottaviani comfortably in there. Again, this is pending any potential steward inquiries. Uh, and then we've got Leonard Krippner, uh, who is on 245 points. Unfortunately, just outside that top five. Max Pfeiffer then in seventh. Jack Keithley in eighth. Christopher Hugvelt in ninth. And then Isaac Price just manages to get himself into that top 10 position. Connery, what an incredible season we have had this season. Um, yeah, Kevin Siggy absolutely deserves it. Is there anybody in that list there that stands out to you as, as a potential surprise? Uh, you know, looking forward to maybe 2023 season of DTM Esports. Is there someone in there that could really come up and go, do you know what? I'm going to reach that next level now. I'm going to become a DTM Esports champion. I mean, you gave him a shout out uh, during the race. You know, Pfeiffer's come on leaps, leaps, uh, leaps and bounds over the course of the season, especially towards the back end of it. Um, there's no reason why he can't get up there and, and try to fight for a potential top five at the end of the next season, potentially, or, or, or any season that he does for, for Race Room Esports. So it's he's looking very, very good. Of course, it's great to see the the the, uh, the, the dual Italians, the uh, Viducci and Ottaviani, you know, um, get themselves a, a good run here in this DTM Esports Championship. Of course, we are focusing on Ottaviani for the entirety of that final race with his fight with Krippner. Uh, but uh, Viducci has also been very, very, very strong uh, this season as well. So it's, it's good to see those names towards the uh, very top of the order um, but you know I would have to say you know uh, potentially Pfeiffer you know P7 in this series not too bad and I don't think we would have really expected him to finish um, P7 uh, <laughs> coming into this season absolutely well that wraps it up ladies and gentlemen dtm esports 2022 is done and dusted it's been an absolute pleasure working with you connery um it's been an incredible championship mm -hmm. to work with so thank you to all of the people in the background especially you connery to all of the producers uh, to all of the sponsors of the event to dtm themselves putting on the event and giving sim racing and esports a genuine opportunity of making it towards the real world of motorsport so yeah thank you from us but we've got one final thank you and that's from the boss I want to say some words, thank you, actually thank you to all of you guys, because you made this championship that great. The DTM eSports series is very important for us, and you are actually behind the wheels and show your performance and the outstanding races. So I'm really looking forward for the boot camp now, and I'm very happy to see one of you in next year's DTM Trophy season 2023.